Welcome, everybody. Yeah. To kick it with the compas. I'm back, baby. Uh, no, that's them. I don't want them. Who are they? That's not Tommy. That's not Sammy Gonzalez, a.k.a. The Megzlins. Hi, folks. I'm Sammy Gonzalez, a.k.a. The Megzlins. Welcome to the show. I'm back. I'm back from Los Angeles, California. 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 No Super title cool, the party. homeless. Still heck is first time chatter in the city of good old Watts. Are you doing the real one or the South Park one? I was expecting the South Park one. Oh, I told him South Park went on the car. <laughs> Super cute to the homeless. <laughs> anyway, well, everybody, it's the Mario Twins, everybody. Hey. hey. Joining us on the other side, as always, usually. I'm JJ. And the other Mario Twin we have, they look the same. Well. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? I'm... Uh, Who are you? <laughs> I'm Juan Solo, touching grass and eating ass. Did you say Juan? Yeah. Oh my God! Welcome everybody. It's another J. <laughs> We've added another J. There's so many J's over here. No, but not the All weed kind. Is, mm -hmm. is it really? Yep. Oh, that's right. There's like a Josefina and stuff in there. Yep. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I, I knew there was a Josefina in there somewhere. His mom too. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so weird. They were born. Funny how that works. They were yeah. born. And who's older Look again? Look at us. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought, man? <laughs> who's the older of the two of you again? Technically me. Te what's the technically <laughs> part? <laughs> Whenever we go places, people think he's the older one because he's is taller that? and more handsome. <laughs> <laughs> JJ, you you have the affinity of being the good looking one on the Megzalance, mm -hmm. which is not a huge you know field to compete in. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, it's I, it's I'd still like to get that in writing or on a plaque of some kind. Uh, <laughs> chat, who's the, chat, who's the most handsomest uh, uh, member of the Megzalance? Use the emojis provided uh, with your membership. By the way, we have all sorts of memberships. We we've been forgetting to tell you guys. Oh, I fucking deleted it. That's why. That's why I fucking deleted it. We have tons of memberships, folks. Here's the thing. We've been available for a long time now, and, and, and it's starting to get expensive. It's starting to get expensive. We actually have to do, like, actual crowdsourcing and funding and telling people to follow us on our Discord. We have, Discord. Discord. Yeah, we have a fucking Discord, JJ. Did you know about this? No. Oh, I thought you'd be on there, like, more than anybody. I thought you would have no-sold them. <laughs> you gotta no-sell them sometimes. <laughs> he needs the no-sell. <laughs> but the goal is a Discord. Dot GG. Dot capital D-E. Lowercase T-P. Uppercase V9, lowercase W, big old K. And on Instagram, the Mexicans official, and on TikTok, the Mexicans. We've literally have been at 93.6 for like a month now, and I want to fucking punch myself in the throat, but I can't commit to it to make it hurt enough. Mm -hmm. But follow us on, on, on I TikTok. Do it and then if you want. I would prefer they follow, <laughs> but if it goes another month at, at 93.6 thousand, I want to get to 100,000 so I can quit. I can't quit until I hit 100,000, so maybe that's why you guys haven't been doing it, but... Um, hey, chat, just vote on it if you want to see me throat punch Sammy. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. First of all, JJ, look Good at... Good old Franco throat punch. Yeah. Look, at, look at the votes for you. Serenity couldn't commit, but there you go. You got more Rakeen, DJ Lemon, Joe Jira. We need more emotes. I make mm. the emotes. It's so much work for me. But here's the thing, Juan. Yeah? You and everybody out there mm -hmm. actually can sponsor a segment on the show. Really? Not even just a, like a whole like uh, interview or anything like that, because here's the thing, folks. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, bills cost money. Our editor needs more money. I need more money. I'm trying to get rid of my Who bookmark the fuck bar. Is Bill? Mm -hmm. Is Bill? he on the show? Bill. Yeah, you said Bill costs money. Mm -hmm. Bills cost money. Plural, as in oh, Williams. More than one? <laughs> yes, there's so many Williams out here. <laughs> they cost so much money. But here's the thing, folks. Look at that. We have a Patreon. And for $5 a month, you can get a free extra show. So when we're gone for an extended period of time, you get that extra show on Monday. That's right. We have Mondays all the way through April. We're just situated. So... We'll get some new live ones, and we have another Sexlins coming up. Uh, speaking of, I guess Christina just jumped in the chat, but she doesn't fly out till April 4th, but on April 4th-ish, we're going to do a Sexlins with a girl. We're going to have a girl's input on sex. What? A woman? Instead of a bunch of dudes just talking about fucking and the first time having sex, which was the first episode of the Sexlins, which is live for $5 a month, but the majority of our members are at the Super Mexlins 2 Turbo, and that just means that they get a raffle entry into a free t-shirt from mexmerch.com. So, for that at fifteen dollars, you can win a free T-shirt, and it pays for itself because that's a they cost twenty five. So you even gain money, gain money on that one. And a lot of people see the value of that. But for twenty five dollars, you could sponsor a segment, and that segment 
will be actually no does that you get a segment yeah you do get a segment you, you can ask us to watch a video or do something like that or throw a punch me in, in the throat it's only 25 yeah. there's a, there's the 50 dollars one where you get to make a whole show but if you pay 50 dollars, you can make a whole show of me getting punched in the throat which is to my limit which is probably about four damn because i only have two hands oh uh, well and you're holding my mushroom which for longtime viewers and listeners he's been trying to abscond with for years well, no hold on a second you're painting the picture all wrong let me learn for you lore keepers of the excellence, y'all. Oh, and we remember, have lore keepers. Y'all will remember that during the anniversary stream, Sammy gifted this to me as a souvenir because it was my first on camera appearance on the excellence. And I did no such thing. He said, I am going to hold this. It is my souvenir. And he just presumed that I was. Allowing him to abscond with my mushroom. Now, that is not what happened. However, with that said, Sam, I don't know if you've reminded the audience, but we are in a brand new studio. This is a new apartment. So yes. I wanted to bring you a housewarming present. Oh, my God. So this is from me to you. Congrats on the move. Oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. I, what if I just got larger? I did. Actually, I have since last time. You've, mm. yeah. See, I lost a bunch of weight. Maybe this is what's keeping me large. But this is my one of my favorite things in the world, and it's totally been out of my absence since the last time you were here. Mm -hmm, and yeah. now it has been restored to me, and it smells a little bit like man sanitizer, mm -hmm. which apparently you keep on your person at all times. Yeah. So he, Sam, let us use his it does bathroom. Smell like, it does smell like man sanitizer. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. And. He didn't have any soap in the bathroom. I'm st I have soap in my bathroom, but they have their own bathroom. I have not. Mm -hmm. We've not earned enough money. That's why we need Patreon subscriptions so I can get them hand soap for when they pee themselves. And so I told him it's all right because in my pocket I have my manitizer. Right, and I was looking at him like it's just hand sanitizer, and he was like, "But no, mm -mm, for it's bed. manitizer <laughs> because you see." It isn't just regular hand sanitizer. This is Bath and Body Works men's collection hand sanitizer, a.k.a. the manitizer. And the thing is, it's, it's fucking scented, which it's like, can men just exist without having to be like having to put on the show of being a man can't they just wash their hands can't they just wash their ass well I mean, there's man wipes for their buttholes it's well, like I mean, just I use toilet you, paper i would if you had soap in the bathroom well i so to be fair you didn't add, you could use the dish soap there's always dish soap That's where the not dishes are hand soap. but it's antibacterial it still so works is, this. is it and oh. it's for men yeah but there's no suds. It's the suds that get the yeah. I'm not Yeah, it's the suds. I'm, yeah. it's the I'm, not, suds. I'm a Overs. snack. <laughs> it's the suds that get the butthole stuff clean. All right, because sanitizer gets it. You know, mm -hmm. lack of germs, maybe some goo off your hands, but the suds get the butthole crumbs off and your hands when you're doing too much down there. I mean, theoretically, I could shove this up my ass, and it probably would still <laughs> do the same job. <laughs> That'd be a breath of fresh air. Go right up. <laughs> Woo, Mitzi fresh. If you were using that, man. Left you feeling fresh and clean. Oh, oh man. man. Get some banitizer up your pooper. Oh, my God. And wouldn't you get drunk for like a little bit, though? Huh? Wouldn't you get drunk for a little bit? Because your rectum has all the, the things to absorb alcohol. Hmm. The drug facts say it has 71% alcohol. <gasps> We can butt chug. You guys are going to butt chug manitizer? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. And then your <laughs> farts will smell like cologne. I mean, oh, 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 and you blacked out smelling like your fart smelling like cologne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe Jira's already ahead of you. He typed, it out. he typed it out as you were saying it yeah. in the future past. Go hey, ahead, Joe Jira. We got alphas in the chat. What's up, people? Oh, okay. I'm about to say, I thought you meant like alpha, like the, which is the thing you're talking about. I thought you meant in the... Um, what the fuck's his name? Andrew Tate sense. But no, you're not talking about that. You're talking about... The Alpha Primos. It's our podcast that me, Jay, and Paco do. We're cousins, hence the name. But we're not the real alphas. Our viewers are. Y'all are the true alphas for watching the show. So be sure to go to Alpha Primos on YouTube and subscribe. And there's JJ doing the and obviously the energy dance. What the fuck is it called? The spirit Kinkidama. bomb? The, Kinkidama, the spirit bomb. The spirit. Why'd you say it like the spirit band? Well, because you didn't know what it was. Well, it's the spirit bomb. And that's also how King Kai says it. Yeah, you got the spirit bomb. Go, go. Mm. 
Which one's with, wait? I was about to say which one is uh, the little cat thing that is that is that you in heaven? Cora. That's Cora. Is he in heaven with them? No, no he's still he's, alive. Okay, yeah. he, he's so, never died. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm. Tra- I was trying to. Chu can do Chaozu. That's the voice. Oh, Chaozu. Ooh, he's Chaozu is kind of. I don't know. Like, that, there's the like the. It's uh, very feminine. Like the bridge one. That yeah. It's like a very like high pitched like no Tien because then you can just bring me back with the Dragon Balls and it's like but you already died we can't bring you back. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Gohan. That's all I can do. That's just just the word Gohan, just as Piccolo. Oh wait, hold on. Where is Juan from? East LA. I'm trying to place the accent. No, bro. I'm You're from... not from East LA, Holmes. No, I'm from Texas. Hey, you're from you're from Southeast Texas, man. Yeah. No. From Eagle Pass. Everybody's right from next, Eagle Pass. Right next to the border in Mexico. You're actually in the midst of the invasion. I am. <laughs> the invasion is all mm, over the there's place. There's so many people. <laughs> Just so many. No hotels? Nothing for you guys. Nothing. No. Nothing. You want to check out a hotel? Too bad. You Bro, gotta sleep in the park. We're also in the path of totality. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. We're That's getting, good. We're getting the eclipse. There's going to be like a festival and stuff. And Are you be- guys sacrificing something to Quetzalcoatl? You so, got to. <laughs> so what's funny enough, what's going on with that is that because of all the migrant situation going on, it was originally going to be in the park. But oh, now you, they're I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say the migrants in the dark of the moon are going to take over America. No, but, but because of all the the stuff that's happening, right. the military that's... took took it over the park. So now they're like, where the hell are we gonna do the eclipse festival? Aww. Where are we sacrificing the goat? So, so now it's gonna, gonna be us. it's gonna be on the Kickapoo Native Tribe Reservation. Long uh, ass fucking time ago in a town called. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Correction. Not on the res. It's gonna be at the casino. But I mean, it's right there. But yeah, they're gonna do it there. Yeah. I can't think of a more unlucky place. Than you the sound casino. nothing. Wait, hold on. I'm reading that. You sound nothing like JJ or Marcos. I'm calling Cap. Why would I lie that I'm from Eagle Pass, dude? This is like the <laughs> shittiest town. Right. That's ever. Right. <laughs> Hey, you can say you're from Del Rio. You could have said that. No, fuck Del Rio. <laughs> Our mall is better than Del Rio. <laughs> Damn. Our mall is stronger now. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. We have absorbed it to... We have yep. absorbed their arcade to gain its power. <laughs> well, yeah, why would you lie about that? And, and yeah, Do you sound like the same person of everybody you. you're from? Like, what town you're from? I can assure you, we lived in the same house since he was born. Mm-hmm. Right. And for and he, what you must have picked up an accent from probably, like, a TV show or something, I bet you. Huh, well, I, mean, I just know a lot of cats that I grew up with that were Spanish speakers only, and then they like adopted a voice that their English voice, mm-hmm. which is different than their Spanish voice. And so maybe you just picked up, I don't know, Burt my Reynolds. does change when I'm nervous. You're, does it get higher? No, it tends to get like almost be more bl- Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you get like a Ninja Turtle? <laughs> <laughs> because I. Gr- learned English from Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I default to like comfort, <laughs> warm blankets. But that's what I'm saying. You, you default to Bugs Bunny. You may default to uh, Barney. I don't know. You're younger. I don't know. If someone figures it out, I'll, I'll He did comfort. like Barney. Yeah. I did. I watched the shit out of it. Exactly. We went to a live show. Yeah, we did. At the Aztec Theater, that's now a Booties. That's now, yeah. <laughs> that's now a what? <laughs> it, it used to be a knockoff Hooters called Booties. <laughs> <laughs> that's not subtle at all. Yeah. Is it like little baby shoes? Is that what it was? But then no, it's a, no, no, it's no. a it was, titty bar? It was just ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> That is, it's like not a, that anymore. Now it's a yeah, dance studio. I like I like that. I thought that was going more further places, but it's like no, it's just about ass. Just yeah, the man. ass restaurant. <laughs> like, yeah. The, I, I mean, the logo was an ass. Yeah, it was great. It was an Eagle Pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me see. Is it a chain or is it just the only one? It was the yeah, only it was one. The only one. But just like how before we had a Denny's, we had a Danny's. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think there's still a Danny's in Laredo. <laughs> I want to see if I can You can't even find it First of all I can't even spell restaurant Probably not Bo- yeah. Booties It didn't last that long dude Lux bod Nope That's not gonna be it man Well that's the thing We do have another bit of news That we could talk about Is that goddamn path of totality mm-hmm. People are acting like The world's gonna fucking end Because of all the people That are traveling to The path of totality mm-hmm. And uh, let's see where's one San Antonio's right here So Austin's like right there too yeah. Which I don't know how They didn't get mentioned So we're right in the path 
And a lot of people are saying, like, don't fucking drive that day because traffic is going to be fucking awful and you're going to die. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little bit scared, but that's what's going to be happening on April 8th. Uh, a lot of kids have school off and shit, and I gotta go find those solar glasses from our local public library, which so I don't, I, I don't think, stare in the sun like I did last time. I'm getting the day off work. Are you really? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Are you I'm, gonna I, hang out with Paco, or are you gonna help him plan the sacrifice? I could, actually. <laughs> who we gonna sacrifice? Who we gonna s- <laughs> sacrifice? <laughs> Chewy, fool. That fool hey, didn't. Yo, por qué, <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, you fucking murdered me, it ain't gonna rain. <laughs> Let me find that video for people to know what we're talking about. Uh, I'm just gonna look up sacrifice Chewy. <laughs> sacrifice. Dang, look at that. Ginger's getting two days off. Che- nice. Damn. Nice. That, that's just the company that just doesn't want to work. Technically, I've been off since. January. <laughs> I mean, that's big pimping because he's getting a day w- one for each eyeball for the eclipse. <laughs> that's that, that's how they celestial body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how they calculated it. That's all right. We're going straight to the pyramids, but <laughs> this is us, this is us on the total solar eclipse. But first, who are we gonna sacrifice? sacrifice Let's go. That fool hasn't invented shit. Has it invented <laughs> shit? That fool, all he does is eat blueberries in his hut, dog. He's not even a hunter and he a gatherer. No, but up that way, because that's not cool. Rain. A la chingada con los jaguares. Fool, what I'm saying is that we gotta wait at least two more weeks. Uh, right now, everybody, let's just get the peaches. And let's make our way to the pyramids, fool. Let's just make our way to the pyramids. Everybody, come on, gather up. Everybody, just come on and gather up. Let's go. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's go. No, but, 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 but. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, we all, like, I know it happened in 2017, but just, like, all the Mexicans just get, like, all sorts of blood boils and shit. Like, just feel like a sudden rage. Like, what was it that, like, December 2nd, like, 2000, uh, 2021, where all the black people got superpowers? Do you remember that on what? Twitter? Oh, no, on Twitter. So there was this day. Is this like the raid on Area 51? Did, mm, like did only black people go and make it in? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. So, no, what happened was it was uh, it was like, okay, if you go on Twitter, which I don't mm-hmm. too much anymore, um, it was this lady, and, you know, there's ladies that, like, I have uh, uh, oh, fucking subscriptions. They go, I have visions of the future and I have visions of uh, of everything around me and I'm in charge of my inner is that the rain? <laughs> no, I don't know if it was rain or a jet plane we just heard a thunder it's the it's squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> it's squirrel. back the squirrel has come back <laughs> And so, like, so she was, like, doing this thing. And, you know, there's a million people out there. But for some reason, this person out on Twitter a couple of years ago, this was, what I want to say, 2020, as black people, genetically, we are stronger and smarter than everyone else. We are more creative. On December 21st, our real DNA will be unlocked and a majority will be able <laughs> to do things that we thought were fiction. Learn who you are as people. They want to make us average. <laughs> And so everyone's like, oh, man, when am I? Black people checking the progress of the alignment so they can get the superpowers <laughs> December 21st. Got triple checking his list tonight to share his granny powers to the wrong folks. So, so that's the thing. So, like, I'm wondering, do we get our superpowers during the total eclipse? Oh, man, that's going to be cool. You're going to unlock, like, the ability to flip tortillas be- without a spatula. Oh, my God. That was fingers. reserved for only the eldest of Aztec women. Yep. Oh, I can do it. Now everybody can do it. I can do it, too. All right. But now everybody's going to have that. I know, like, uh, people think that I'm annoyed because I'll I'll always look at them when they're making tortillas. Uh My cousin, he's born and raised in Austin, Mm -hmm. so he's not as powerful in in the ways of Mexico as I am. Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah, it happens. And he invited me, uh, Mark, and Paco over to his place for for dinner Uh one time, and... I was looking at him making tortillas, and he's like, you're judging me, aren't you? I was like, oh, no. Man. Was he using a fork? He was using a spatula. Oh, not a <laughs> spatula. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, we ran out of tortillas, and I was like, I got it, bro. <laughs> like, oh. Bruce Lee did. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to. You you got to. Mm-hmm. It's like the ones where the Indian guys can put their hand in hot oil. Have you seen those videos? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all, we all are getting our superpowers. But if, like, imagine, though, like, the eclipse, 2017, it was a real short one. I think it was not. It was near total Slightly or racist, total. But what if we all become giant apes, like, in Dragon Ball? <laughs> 
dude, what if Akira Toriyama fucking died? Was like the, the was the thing that's gonna put us over, and now we're all gonna be Saiyans. Yeah. It's like people saying that like the queen had like a uh, like a witchcraft like um, runes all across fucking Windsor Tower or whatever, and now that she died, the runes broke, and that's why the, the fucking prince got cancer and Middleton's fucking gone. Like they were saying that she had witch powers. Mm -hmm. So and Cat Williams did say all will be revealed. We'll get to that in one of our later topics. So it's not fun times when 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 things get revealed. But if Toriyama dying unleashes our Saiyan abilities and the moon eclipses the sun, because, you know, we are the children of the sun, not of the moon. So he inverted it for the show to keep us in hiding. We're all going to be fucking Saiyans. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like this plan. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. It actually loops to my experience here and also, JJ, your favorite person of all time. Because we had another experience where uh, all the stars aligned and we were protected from the impending end of the universe. Oh, you're talking about the rapture? Oh, you talk oh I'm talking about the rapture, baby. <laughs> I'm talking about the motherfucking rapture. Now, here's the thing. Do you remember one of the last times we got raptured? Like, it's been a while since we had a good rapture because the world's mm -hmm. been kind of hectic right now. But do you remember one of the last, like, real big raptures where people were fucking kind of panicking a little bit? This was over, this was a long time, longer time ago. Yeah, it was before 2012. Okay, so you remember that one, right? Yeah. Do you remember what happened the day of that rapture? No. Oh, of course I do. Of course, of, co <laughs> of fucking course you do. What happened, JJ? Macho Man Randy Savage gave his life so that we may all be spared. Mm -hmm. Right. He died for our sins. Oh, Macho Man. <laughs> so. Here's the thing. May 20th, 2011 was one of the many rapture days that we were given. But a lot of people were like, this is the real one. He delivered the sweetest of elbow drops and was like, not today, Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've come here to save all mankind. <laughs> Hold on. May rapture day. I want to just see what comes up. 2011 end times predictions. Um, yeah, May 21st, massive earthquakes, greater magnitude than the 2011 Japanese earthquake would happen across at 6 p.m. local time. The end of the world will take place five months later on October 12th. Oh, yeah, that's right. When that didn't happen, October, it got bumped mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. So so Macho Man st staved off the end of times. Mm -hmm. But like to imagine because he actually died of a heart attack mm -hmm. uh -huh. and they tried to resuscitate him mm -hmm. i like to believe that he was like actually wrestling jesus in that in that <laughs> interim space mm -hmm. jesus was like i got you for three minutes well I'm better make it fun <laughs> <laughs> and three minutes he arose no uh <laughs> see that's the thing people that chat jesus versus macho man book it oh, no. boat saw is ready say what if it's the rumbling don't you put that bad juju out man. <laughs> the rumbling <laughs> that's uh, uh, attack, attack on Titan. Titan. Attack? Oh no! But here's what happened that day that we went. Uh, that the rapture was supposed to happen May 21st. So we had, we had been driving and we found out Macho Man died. So that night we got a bunch of Slim Jims. Me and my siblings and we raised Slim Jims in his honor. All four of us. We touched Slim Jims and we ate the Slim Jims. And then the next day we went to motherfucking Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So the rapture was avoided. We got a nice trip to Disneyland. All was well. And it brings me to my current trip that I went to Disneyland. Everyone's like, yeah, Sam, you go to Disneyland all the time. Shut the fuck up. You're not a part of the cast in the sense that you're not always here. Do you get well, tired no, of all? never worked at Disney. No, not worked mm -hmm. at Disney. Wait, well, what? You said cast. This cast. Oh. oh. No, no, you're not a cast member as in the person that they call the people that they work there. But you're a cast member here. But you go out and watch the show occasionally. <laughs> and do you get tired of all the times I mentioned Disneyland? You mentioned Disneyland? Okay, good. There you go. That means you don't watch, which is nice. <laughs> but... <laughs> But here's the thing, folks. I did a real cool thing. I did a real fucking cool thing, dude. At Disney? Well, I, I find that hard to believe. Yeah, dude. I did crystal <laughs> meth, dude. It was fucking great. Small World was fucking awesome. <laughs> you did that salt on it's small Fucking world. shit. I like that guy. That's it. I'm stripping. <laughs> I saw that guy and I was like, that seems like a good idea. Wait. Did you stroke it in the ratatouille? Right? No, no, rat, rat, that's in Florida. There was no ratatouille ride to stroke it on. It was actually Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which if you've never heard about Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I bet it was. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You legit don't know this, but in Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, the premise of the, the, premise of the ride is don't speed around London or you will go to hell. 
and you end up in hell in the ride. Mm -hmm. It's fucking insane. It's it hotter in London. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's like Mr. Toad's like, I'm gonna go like, whip around, whip it, whip it, whip it, and he's driving around. That's the ride. His little kid ride. You're driving around, and then it's like, oh no, you caused too much havoc. Guilty, and then you're like, you won't take me alive, motherfuckers. And so in the ride, you drive away, and then you get hit by a train, and then the little cardboard box opens, and it's just like temperature like goes up to like 95 degrees. It gets real humid, and there's fucking pitchfork monsters everywhere, and there's a big dragon and then the right ends and that's the moral of the story and i was high on pcp when i did that I said, no 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 but as you can see i can i'm wearing a shirt that uh, a, a baseball tee that says club 33 happy birthday i that's my birthday everyone thought it was my birthday because i was like i was a club 33 in my birthday and uh she's going to disneyland on 420 so blaze it blaze it <laughs> you will get Kicked out forever if you blaze it, I think. But really? some dude got naked, and I think he was five. No, he got murdered. No, they slit they, his throat afterwards. Dang, it really was a small world then. Oh yeah, no, it was his world was over. Damn. His world was well, fucking I mean, over. They they needed him for parts. <laughs> they harvest parts. Yeah, they right. needed Walt. They needed Walt's new body to put in exactly. once the freeze happened. So that sounds awesome. I want to go. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I went to the. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> We're fucking riffing. I don't know what's true, what's not. What is true though uh -huh. is that. Um, oh, that nope. That was <laughs> to the chat. That's the chat. No. Yes. Let's, the chat is always true. Let's go back. <laughs> what is true is that I went to this place. It's a magical place called Club Thirty Three. What is that? It's a nook. No, I'm kidding. What? So, <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, a reading tablet. It's a yes. It's a reading <laughs> tablet. No, it's a little area in Disneyland that is. Fucking exclusive as shit. Uh -huh. And what I mean exclusive as shit, I mean it's a $30,000 entry fee, like a 10-year waiting list, and I think like a $25,000 yearly fee or some shit like that. So it's a bunch of celebrities and rich assholes. It's mm -hmm. a clubhouse that they can go to, and they can enjoy dinner, have a little like a balcony seating. They can get away from the parks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And through some stroke of fate... Can you my, see Disney's frozen head? Well, that's the thing. It was <laughs> It's Walt Disney's apartment that he had, and then he's like, we're going to make it into a clubhouse. And then he fucking died like a month before it finished. Mm -hmm. And so then they're like, we must keep on his legacy. And so they had this super secret club that you could only take pictures in. You could only take pictures, no video. Mm -hmm. And... and and I'll tell you the other caveat that scares the fuck out of me. But you have this, mm -hmm. and in 2014, like they renovated it, whatever. The point is, is a long waiting list. It's super hard to get in. But my sister knew somebody who knew somebody who was like, yeah, let me make a message, whatever. And they, you can invite people on your behalf. And, and so that's how we got in. And so we're like, what? Super secret Disneyland place. My girlfriend's a huge fan. She was like, oh, my God, we're going. I'm like, this is really fucking cool. I've been a bunch of times. My brother went for his birthday. And my sister, obviously, was the one who was like, I'm going to fucking do, do, it, do it real big. Mm -hmm. And so... We did this, and they're like, yeah, no, take no pictures of the um, celebrities or anybody that's not in your party. And I said, mm -hmm. okay. And there was no celebrities when we went. There was no, like, Bro, Bezos. you can't take pictures. Just lie to me. Like, yeah. Oh, no. If I, Mark Hamill was there. Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Ruf, Alfonso Ribeiro was there. Uh -huh. Carlton was there. Um, Daniels. D Danny Daniels. <laughs> She, I don't know how she got in. The, the, the artwork payments must have been coming in pretty nicely. Yeah. Um, but no, but they got like this little mezzanine well, I area. I bought a lot of videos. Oh, that, she can make it in. Yeah. <laughs> JJ single-handedly funded her Danny Daniels' dinner. Uh, there she is right there in the Tinkerbell <laughs> the locket thing. But no, this place is like this super exclusive, super bougie place. And the funny thing was is that like you're also at a theme park, so you're just kind of like, oh, how am I supposed to dress? We found like a button-up shirt, and you know, there's like a right. Peter Pan statue. There's a piano. There was can the, I be a Jawa? You can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wear shorts. You you can't wear sandals, mm. but everything else is pretty much okay. Like, they know you're traveling. But mm. here's the thing. Christina Chia uh, subscribed to Tier 1 for 15 months in a row. Mm. That's pretty cool. Not Stormy Daniels. Yeah, Danny Daniels. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in Texas, you can't look that up. And uh, they, they, they bet. <laughs> she, uh, oh, well, Stormy well, has a documentary coming out on Peacock. Gotcha. On the cock. But Danny Daniels is on Pornhub, if and Pornhub were. is blocked in Texas. So, which we didn't talk about last time. Pornhub is blocked in Texas. It's bullshit. Anyway. It seems to be the only one, though. Yeah. yeah. You can, there's, I've done... Mm -hmm. Yeah, my no, fair share of research. No, yeah, I re I researched it strictly for you know research purposes and uh, <laughs> research and um, yeah, the, por the porn up's the only one that doesn't work. For yeah, exactly. Oh, I I, oh, I tested too. I was like, okay. <laughs> which ones care about laws? But anyway, yeah. so like you're in this fancy place, and the funny thing is, is like we're all kind of giddy because we all. 
are from Southeast Fresno. Like you guys are from, <laughs> you guys are from uh, uh, Eagle Pass or from Fresno, California, which is like Eagle Pass, but more central in a bigger city. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, tonality, it's the same tone. Okay. And so we're there and we're just like, what are we doing here? And one of the first things that let us know we weren't in fucking Kansas anymore was the person goes to my girlfriend who has those little lounge fly backpacks, the little pretty backpacks that Disney people have. Mm -hmm. Would you like a step stool for your backpack, madame? She was like, what? And it was a stool that they would bring out for her backpack so the backpack didn't touch the ground. And she was just like, no, thank you. I can't, I can't do this. In, in, good, in good conscience, I cannot do this. And then the next lady came in and then she was like, yes, please. And so that lady had a fucking backpack stool. And that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Because in Mexico, you just get like this little like hook thing. And it's so women can hang like their purse. Yeah, like, those shits are tight. Yeah, that's it. You just get that little hook. That's it. Then you got a whole stool here. And then I learned about, did you know that there's a plate you're not supposed to eat on what? in fancy restaurants? Oh, that like silver one that goes oh, on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, that was theirs. Yeah. So. He had one at his uh, his engagement dinner. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That shit's yeah. like some fancy the bougie first shit. Thing, the first thing my mom did was put like peanuts in. <laughs> oh, no, see, see, that was the thing. Because we're like, oh man, we're gonna eat on the Club Thirty Three fucking dinette china, and then they were like. Take the plate away. I was like, hey, was this a psych? Are we not getting allowed to eat here? Goddamn Mexicans, get out of here. They fucking throw it away. See, I already didn't believe that you went when you said that they let you in. You, they wouldn't allow Mexicans in there. <laughs> well, that was the thing. We were the only ones there. Yeah. We, it felt like because because the thing was, I was kind of oh, facing no, no, away. No. I'm pretty sure there were some in the kitchen. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, no. Yeah, the, well, let's see. What was the server's name? Uh, Christopher Moran, there you go, manager, chef, Gloria Te, uh, Andrew Sutton, culinary director. But yeah, they, they have the whole little history there. And then here was the fucking meal options. Um, but the, but before we get even deep to the meal, mm -hmm. they take our plate away and we're just like, oh shit, what are we doing? And we order the drinks and the drinks are strong as fuck, which was cool as shit. But then the weirdest part... <laughs> Now I've never fifties. I've <laughs> never breakfast was whiskey and cigarettes. <laughs> right, right. I've never had a man do this to me before, uh, but I saw on. him go around, and he was like this. He, he, he grabbed the uh -huh. the thing, and he was putting. He put it on my sister's lap, and he put it on my girlfriend's lap, and my panza's hanging near the table. So I'm like, let's go back a little bit, and he laid the fucking my napkin on my lap for me. And I didn't know how to feel because I was like, "This is too fa I'm, this is too fancy. Mm -hmm. This is too much already. I, I don't belong here. I'm a creep." And then they did it to my brother. My brother giggled, and I was going and giggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Rate the food of one to ten. We're getting there, Rakeen. You got to let us simmer a little bit." And then enjoy but, your steak sandwich, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he ordered the Chinese food. It was a big argument. Wow. Uh, but then there you go, le grand salon dinner. So they had caviar, which we didn't get. But no, I ended neither. up getting the uh, savory prosciutto cannoli. Oh, I took dang. the cannoli. Oh dang! They don't have prices on that menu. Oh no, they no. It's all the same price. It was all. Uh, it's at the bottom at the very thing the here. Left nut. I'll flash it right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, one hundred forty a head. Plus drinks, which I the drinks didn't have any. Sushi even. we ate the other yeah. <laughs> Tacos of sushi, can, can tacos of sushi. Just super quick, just do. And interject, go ahead. We went to the revolving Kura. Su Yeah. Yeah, that place is dope. I saw you go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was really cool. It was really fun. And they had the plates that if you ate more than like 15 plates. You got, got anime. A, you got a prize. Yeah. yeah. So I was trying him. to get something for Ava because it's uh, Spy Family toys. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, I'll show you some people. Complain. Uh, continue. Uh -huh. So, me and him were like, oh, we can do 15 plates. No problem. Yeah. So, we do the 15 plates. No problem. And it's like, so every 15 plates, you get a prize. We're like, well, we could do 30, right? Right. <laughs> so... We got to like plate number 22 and by then we were kind of hitting the wall and it's like, all right, we, we're, we're committed. Like we have to do this. Right. And well, we prevail. We pulled through. We probably shouldn't have ordered that ramen. We yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You yeah, got, got excited. We got excited to do other side quests. <laughs> we ordered a ramen and the ramen doesn't count towards the price. Right. Cause it's not in the slider. Exactly. Uh, right there. And so right there, right there for people who ah, don't know. Buying prizes is for the week, Uchiha. <laughs> Buy all the prizes. Fuck that noise. No, but so those little plates right here on the revolving sushi, they go in a little mm. tray and it counts automatically how many trays. And there's a little TV with a little egg dispenser 
here, and every five plates you get anime, and then every fifteen plates you get a little egg. And so the ramen was not in one of these little uh, disposable trays no, yeah, that like, goes right what here. What do we do with this bowl? Because it won't we, fit. What, uh, it won't go. <laughs> Give us the prizes. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to get rid of it. It was it, oh yeah, yeah that's taking away. Cheesecake space. And, and come on, that ramen should have counted for at least five plates, dog. Yeah. I mean, price wise, I think it did. Yeah. It, yeah. It, <laughs> I want to go so, now. Shit. That's a and, fucking well, little place. Good news. I got like 15 bucks worth of rewards. We can go. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, and, as long yeah, as I and, get them. <laughs> what, and so we, we knocked down the 15, the 15 plate. We got the 30. And then every five plates, you get like a little anime, like cut scene yeah, on yeah, like yeah. the screen. So we got to like 33 plates at the end of the night. <laughs> and it's like, Jay, we need two more and we get a cut scene. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we like, are doing that math in our heads like... Can I? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but hold on, but but because it's like a linear story, like every two completes a storyline. Was it the completion of the storyline or the start of another? I think it was the it start was the of another. Oh god, yeah. that's that's even yeah. worse. I think I can I gotta eat five more. Yeah, and so we, we 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 tapped out after that, and then we got the bill, and it was like, I know we each ended up it was having like one sixty. Yeah, we each had to pay eighty bucks. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's just food, man. Oh yeah, no no no, <laughs> that place will do it because you're like having fun stacking plates, getting sides. Oh no, yeah, I had a big big pile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a fun time, man, and and that was the thing. It wasn't like that here. Oh, <laughs> my I'm sister, my sister was nice enough to be like. It's on me, cause she's you know she's got money. She's You're my older sister. Regret that. <laughs> no 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 not Kara no 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 she's coming to visit me next weekend oh. and she goes we're going to Terry Black's with my fourteen year old nephew who eats like a fucking hoss so I'm gonna be out fucking way more than that just by feeding that motherfucker and I let and he watches the show that's where I called you motherfucker stop eating so much beef anyway so then we got, uh, we got? Hey, I got a few questions here. But, um, <laughs> Back Geek, yes, I'm free on Saturday. 33 plates, man, y'all boys were hungry. I did not eat that yeah. day. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot what I did to, like, preoccupy me during the day. But, uh -huh. like, basically, I went to go pick him up at 5. Yeah. And that's when I got hungry and was like, in the middle of my second comp drink at his hotel, I was like, "Shit, yeah, I probably should, <laughs> probably should have like gotten a burrito or something at mm. a gas station." <laughs> right? No, no, no. What you got to do? Is, well, first of all, it's only fifteen plates. I could do fifteen plates there. No, on an off day, mm -hmm. you know the sushi. I love sushi. That's like my, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, food mm -hmm. at this point. Also, like they have watermelon and cucumber. Yeah, and the other thing is like the plates are tiny, dude. They only oh, yeah. put like one or two rolls of sushi. I don't want you guys thinking it was like a whole roll. Oh no, yeah, you it's know, it's, like, a, it's a it's <laughs> a <laughs> Sampler, it's a taste, and each plate yeah. is like two fifty or something like something that. Something like that. It's gone so, up. It's like yeah, three it's, bucks. yeah. It's more Fuck like three that. Now, yeah, no. <laughs> Are you down for part two on? So yes, hell yeah. Oh, Bad G's <laughs> coming to town, and so he's gonna give us fried chicken on Friday. And then he wants to get cursives on Saturday. Shit, my wallet is going to be hurting. Because like I said, we did this whole Disney weekend. And I, and obviously, I bought this jersey. This was not cheap. Um, but So then what did I else did I get? I got the uh, uh, the duck confit with potato gnocchi mm -hmm. and tender greens. I got the grilled filet what mignon. Confit, again? confit is uh, uh, like the cooked foam? down, like soft. Because like garlic confit is like when you cook it in the oil uh -huh. and it just softens it in the oil. So I think it's cooked in oil. Okay. So okay. yeah, this is duck confit is probably duck was duck meat yeah, cooked yeah, in its yeah, own nice. fat, which is oh so good. And then I got the grilled filet mignon and the warm pineapple caramel cake. Uh, I I got pictures. Where's my pictures? I just had to remember what I actually ate. Jesus Christ. Well, there's our drinks. I don't know what the fuck I got. I'm right there with my my food and mm -hmm. stuff right there. Um, there's the there's the duck confit with the little maggot looking things, but they were potato gnocchi, the delicious. Gnocchi. There was the dessert. Uh, let's what see, is that? that was uh, pineapple cake and then edible flowers, which I ate these crunchy ass flowers, mm -hmm. and they were really good. Let's see, where is? Did I not? Where's the fucking steak? No pictures of the steak. I guess I lost it. It's on my Instagram. Go look mm -hmm. at it. Point is, this shit was fancy as fuck, and the best part about it. Um, was the fact that, like, you know, we're just, like, whatever people, you know? We, we don't think too much about the finer things in life, but there was a kind of a moment of just, like, serendipity where it was just like, man, you know what? We're in this fancy place. My sister works really hard at her job, knows fancy people that can afford this shit. Mm -hmm. The fact that she's two away from somebody who has $60,000 on any given fucking day to do Disney nonsense. But then there was a little balcony, 
And the balcony is right above New Orleans Square, which is right next to Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. And we were just able to go on the balcony and just look at all the pores. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. It was so fucking sweet. Just looking at all the poor people like, how did they get in there? Like, like that's just like a regular restaurant down there. I've eaten at that restaurant dozens of times. No problem at all. But uh, oh, and Serenity asked, did it taste good? Absolutely. fucking lootly Those drinks fucking punched you in the chest. They were that good. I had a mint julep that was literally just all fucking julep. No mint at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucked up. Um, the steak was the, one of the best, if not the best steak I've had in my life. I am the, willing to talk a lot of shit about Disney. But the food? Food-wise, they haven't missed with me. Mm-hmm. Except the churro. But only because... You know, it's just churro, yeah. Yeah, I can get that straight from the tap. Yeah. <laughs> this shit tastes like fucking like a good-ass barbacoa somehow. The duck tastes yeah. like barbacoa. Um, and then the steak is on my Instagram. I got to find it. But then they got like chandeliers and shit. Everything said Club 33. But mm-hmm. Oh, but that was the one thing. Uh, I, I, I kind of don't want to get in trouble because here's the thing. I told you no video, right? No video. It's very private. Don't bother other patrons, of course. Mm-hmm. Very easy stuff. Don't but then, get your sister banned. No, yeah. No, no, no. But this was the one that all of, like, I don't know if it was, like, reverse psychology or, w- like, why they told us this. But, like, look at it. It's like, all right, welcome, everybody, to Club 33. Is this your first time? Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, what are we here to celebrate? Oh, it's your birthday. Well, happy birthday. Let me get you a, a, a button and everything. So all we ask is that you do, you take photos of anything you'd like to, just none of any of the other parties. And you can take pictures of the portraits. You can take pictures of anything. But do not take pictures of the bathroom. Huh. Hmm. If you that? take pictures of the bathroom, we will fucking kill you. So I'm guessing I'm not going to see a TikTok from that yeah. one. Well, that, well, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing I was wondering because, like, we were all like, well, what the fuck's that about? And we figured we went through, like, a couple things in our brain, which was, like, we don't want people taking pictures of people in the bathroom. Of course. Of course. It's, like, the ultimate rich people's club, and you don't want people being weird in the bathroom. Okay. Makes sense. Or taking selfies or wasting your time, whatever. Mm-hmm. Two... What the fuck are they hiding in there? Which is why I thought I was going to see fucking Walt's frozen head in there. That's where they kept it. Where it, close to home, where his apartment was. It was just a nice bathroom. And and the thing is, the reason why I wanted to say, like, would I get my sister in trouble? Would I get anybody in trouble? Because there are images on Google that are accurate of the bathroom. <laughs> so I can't, I can't, don't want to confirm which ones are true. See, my brain was going the other way. That, mm-hmm. like, they spent so much money on all this extravagance that, like, the in the front that the bathroom, bathroom is just trash. <laughs> it's like the worst gas yeah, station like, bathroom. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Like, uh, graffiti on the walls. Right, because you could look at, see, like, you're not supposed to do this. I don't know if this is the actual Club 33 bathroom, but, like, you're not supposed to do that at all. Because oh, that's, that's the girls' restroom. I didn't know what the girls' restroom. Obviously, I didn't go to the girls' restroom. But, like, I didn't know. So, like, there's a bunch of these alleged photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rebel Wilson got banned from Disneyland for 30 days for taking a picture. In the, in bathroom. the bathroom? Yeah. Banned from Disneyland for a Lizzie Stepping photo in the park's most exclusive dining venue. Was she on the can when she took the photo? I <laughs> don't know if it was pornographic <laughs> in nature, if that's what you're asking. No, well, no, not pornographic. <laughs> I mean, I mean you, if, you take a, if you take a dick pic in the bathroom, I mean, you just do it because the lighting's the best in there. You know? Right. It's, it's Could a, you imagine taking a Club 33 dick pic? Well, yeah, <laughs> this dick pic cost me 60K. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. You no know, kidding. Oh. <laughs> so, so the thing was is that literally all all of us left our phones at the table just to avoid temptation because we didn't know what we were going to do in there. And the only thing, the only thing that we did that was kind of like, goddamn Mexicans, which I which I rarely say. I rarely say goddamn Mexicans. But the one thing I thought of was because we go in there and you know, it's oh, a nice bathroom, whatever. And it's a pull lever bathroom, like an old timey one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the reason I didn't even need to use the bathroom, I just went in there because someone was peeing and I was like, I want to look around. And so I hid, I closed the door, fully, fully closed door. And it had the little thing. So I'm waiting for the guy to pee. And then I'm like, oh, I'm clear. And then another guy's fucking peeing. I'm like, fuck. So then I go, and it just looked like a nice library inside of there. But they had mouthwashes. Like, oh, fuck it, mouthwash. You know, the whole, you do the whole thing. And then it's like, wash your hands, wash your hands. And then you grab the towels. Those were the fucking fanciest. They were embossed with Club 33 on them. And if they felt nice. And so then I was like... <laughs> take some for souvenirs <laughs> so i have like that too i gave it to my brother and then my girlfriend comes oh, back after me my nose on no <laughs> that was it no, no. There, dude. that was not my 33rd at birthdays <laughs> no, napkins. no. They, do they have a bidet i don't know not for the men at the very least but <clears throat> that was it so and the thing is my girlfriend comes back and then she's like 
I got some napkins for us too. <laughs> Cause I was like, what? So that's how I know, you know, me and her are meant to be because we both stole napkins from Disney. The towels are complimentary. Towel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, who knows? They expect you to take them. I hope. Well, they weren't even, they felt like real towels though. <laughs> they felt <laughs> nice. That's they were that, those fancy like, like paper towels from, uh, what are the Viva the, towels? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they feel like cloth. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they were. <laughs> Shit, that was like my uncle. My uncle was a janitor for like Fresno State uh, for a long time. Mm. And he stole like a fucking pallet of these real really thick like industrial fucking napkins and he had them for like six years and like every fucking barbecue we're like oh we only need one because they're so thick barbecue sauce and everything but yeah dude we were like trying not to get banned literally the first hour was us just trying not to get banned not being too loud by the end of it we're fucking drinking drinks we're on the balcony i almost i almost yelled at them like i almost yelled at the people on the balcony that would have been fun to do I, i i have a question you went to the bathroom and like feel free to not answer if you can't Uh uh-huh but uh when you washed your hands and you looked at the mirror did it tell you to kill snow white oh no 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 it didn't tell me to kill snow white (laughs) what what is what is it is there a story i'm missing no no no, it's just a vague reference reference. (laughs) what's the reference this reference the fucking magic mirror have you not seen snow white oh or shrek oh (laughs) i didn't think he put it in such blunt language though (laughs) I thought I was like, "Oh, did you do something as a child? Did you hallucinate something?" I was like, "No, no I guess no. it's the premise of Snow White." Yeah, vague references always make him laugh. No, <laughs> like the vaguer it is, it gets to me, oh, man. I God. remember there was one time that my grandma or my mom like spilled flour like on the floor, uh-huh. <laughs> and we were walking downstairs, like we were leaving our room to like go hang out in the living room, and we see like this flour on the floor. <laughs> There's like, like yeah, someone, walked, someone on, walked on it. Uh-huh. Like, Barefoot, so, like they're left footprints. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said jinkies. What kind of a ghost leaves footprints? And I was in front of him, so, but I didn't think anything of it. And right. I turned back around and he's like on the floor dying. <laughs> 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 You see, someone spilled flour and they walked away from it and left footprints. And he's like, Jinkies, what kind of a ghost leaves footprint? Like, Jinkies? <laughs> like, like, just no hesitation. Like, <laughs> see, that was the thing. When he said, you know, oh, there's a bunch of flour on the floor, I don't know if you guys had cable or not at that point, but I thought, I can't wait to be rolling in that door. <laughs> That was the first thing I thought of when you said flour on the ground. <laughs> Gentlemen, we're going to be making a lot of bread. Anyway, that was, so that was the experience. Not that fancy, knew it. No, it was it was fancy schmancy shit, man. And pinkies out. Pinky pinkies out, and we 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 got out of there. And they go, well, before you go, we do have a little bit of a gift shop here. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, my girlfriend, being like I said, a lifetime fan, I'm not going to put exactly hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. I mean, not quite, but but my my girlfriend, who is a lifelong fan of Disney, doesn't know when she's ever going to be, if ever, right, which yeah, I'm putting yeah. the universe out there that we are going to be back, knock on wood. Um, she was like, well, I don't know when I'm going to be back, so I need these Mickey ears, these Mickey ears, the keychain. I need the pin set. I need the backpack. It's just, so I got this jersey and a keychain, and I got my cousin a hat and some golf balls. So he's going to give shop exclusive to just the people that ate. No, it's, it's people that go in. Yes. Oh. So like. Like my sister bought some stuff, my brother, mm. and we also we all bought stuff. We all dropped. If I was a guessing man, and the fact that it was four adults, probably like eight hundred dollars between us all. So Damn. yeah, like I spent two hundred, and my cousin gonna pay me back, but I spent two hundred. And and if I didn't already spend a bunch of money, I wasn't supposed to on this move and all this other shit. Um, but but the point of the matter is, and the, and the really the crux of it all is that none of this would have happened if it wasn't for Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> That's really what the fuck we're talking about Ooh. here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the Club 33 for thee. And so... <laughs> I thought you were going to keep riffing. But anyway, because the thing is, I want to keep going because we're having a good time and we're talking about Disney and fun. Mm-hmm. But then, like, the topic at hand is not... Di- it's kind of Disney. But definitely not as fun. And I know you haven't watched the episode series, and you haven't watched the series. You guys have been here. Have you guys been hearing about Quiet on the Set? Mm-hmm. Have you been watching the TikToks and the Twitters? Yeah, 
I've heard some things. Yeah, you've heard, heard some things. You've heard some things. Oh, don't things. don't hear any things, cause I cause I've had my feelers out there. Mm-hmm. You yeah I you rephrase that. <laughs> yeah, please don't please don't have your feelers out there. Uh, oh, that's just Google. Um, did you guys have Nickelodeon growing up? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did you guys watch a lot of like uh, you know all that Snick, if you will? Sure. All that. Well, yes. the, depends on the season, because like the early ones had like Gabriel Iglesias and stuff like that. That was the later ones, had him. That was the later one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, like, cause I saw like from the from him like maybe early, and then like that was it. I don't think I saw like. Was he early or was he late? I'm curious. He was, I could have sworn he he was in. He was late first cast, I think, because then they had all new mm-hmm. cast, right? Yeah, yeah. Then mm-hmm. they brought it back later. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah, he was in one of the last seasons mm-hmm. and i think there was a season without him like after that yeah there he is <laughs> as a grown-ass man 22 years old <laughs> Nickelodeon. I, is that what he used to do <laughs> he used to say oh, in yeah, that was one of his early bits yeah uh, on, in 2000 baby in, in on you, galavision there was this uh stand-up show mm-hmm, like, like you know like premium blend and, uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was que locos and it yeah. was all his yeah comics and there was one episode that featured Gabriel Iglesias mm-hmm. after he transitioned out of Nickelodeon and was just doing, doing stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. And uh, his big thing was that, like, oh, yeah, like, I was in my 20s when I started working on all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, by my last season, I was in my 20s. And Nickelodeon gifted me a car for, like, my 18th birthday or yeah. whatever. And so I was like, oh, this is awesome. And it was, like, his first car ever. It was newish i don't know if it was like brand spanking new Mm -hmm. but like it was a decent car Mm -hmm. and he was like i had the little clicker and it would unlock my doors and i would every time it unlocked i thought nickelodeon (laughs) (laughs) nickelodeon gave me that Mm -hmm. and he ran into uh who's that older comic the Uh, the dude that's been around for like ever uh, was it oh shit pablo it's not pablo francisco no no it was uh, uh, Freddie Soto, uh, uh, Paul Rodriguez. Paul Rodriguez. Paul Rodriguez. There you go. There you go. Paul Rodriguez. Uh-huh. Uh, he ran into him at a dinner, uh-huh. and he's like, felt like showing off to Paul Rodriguez. <laughs> and so like, I I we're walking to our cars, and I go like, <gasps> and I bring out my keys. I do the little clicker, and my car honks, and he's like, oh, that's cool. I say Nickelodeon. And he's like, <laughs> check this out, <laughs> and he. He pulls he out his clicker, out. and he unlocks his doors, starts his engine, and then he's like, check this out. <laughs> like, he's revving the engine from, from the, the clicker, key. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Gabriel's, like, all defeated, like... No, 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 but it is... <laughs> so when he would... When Gabriel would do the clicker thing, he would always go, like, Nickelodeon. And so then when Paul did it, he went... HBO. <laughs> Not even cool, man. <laughs> Chicanos bring another Chicanos down, man. No. <laughs> Crabs in a bucket, I tell Crabs you. in a motherfucking bucket. So, like... <laughs> Not everything is as pleasant as Gabriel Iglesias, twenty year old. Actually, the only thing that he complained about one time, I think it was on a podcast. Pretty where, sure that car now. <laughs> yeah, was that? Uh, well, one, they put him in a dress, and he was like, "I wasn't a big fan of that." Mm-hmm. But two, it was at the end of one of the episodes where I guess they're saying, "All right, everybody, goodbye," and they're waving, and a fucking light fell on his head. Oh shit! And he got like knocked, uh, like oh, nearly unconscious, collapsed, and everyone just was laughing, and nobody helped him, like because he thought they thought it was a bit, but he's like, "No, a light fell on my head. I was knocked nearly unconscious." And everyone was just like, ah, Gabriel. No, and then nobody helped him. He's like, man, fuck this place. I'm legit hurt right now. Uh, but uh, god damn, because we, we did all this Disney fun stuff. And then my girlfriend and I were Sunday night and we're like, what should we watch? And we were like, oh, well, I heard this new this new creepy thing about kids stuff is happening. Uh, it's called Quiet on the Set, the dark side of kids mm-hmm. television. And we're like, yeah, the first two episodes are out. And our editor key was like, yeah, the first two episodes are out. Come take a look. And so we watched the first two episodes and we were just like. And then the next night we're like, okay, well, we got to finish it. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. It doesn't get better. There's no happy ending. I'm okay. So this is going to be a bit of a spoiler. I'm sure a lot of you want to see it. Want have seen it already. I'm sure I'm, you guys don't want to see this. <laughs> I think you guys don't want to watch 
was it 80, 160 minutes of just sad. <laughs> you watch the highlights on YouTube and on, on, on TikTok because you clearly aren't familiar with my YouTube algorithm. Oh, that is true. <laughs> you like watching the hot behind the scenes gossip things, the downfall of VTubers, the downfall of Oogie Boogie or whatever the fuck that guy was and uh, all those types <laughs> oh, of Boogie YouTube. Boogie 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 sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was mad about white people being hated on against in what game came out? There's no such game. That's the why people were clowning on him. No, but what game was he trying to allude to that was doing that? I have no it was like a new game that came out. Um, fuck, I forget. Anyway, mm. point is, mm. they're like, all right, well, hey, we got this guy named Dan Schneider, and he made Disney uh, Nickelodeon super popular, mm. and he had this other guy named Brian Peck who was Pickle Boy. Do you remember Pickle Boy from Amanda Show? Where there's a guy who carried a bunch of pickles. Your brain is going like, do you remember it? Because um, vaguely, vaguely. So here, oh shit, it was this guy right here from the Amanda Show. Okay. So that was one of the also the co-producers of this whatever. And uh, you're gonna, yeah, you're not gonna, man, fuck it. I'm getting mad looking at this picture because you don't know what's, you don't know what I'm about to say. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, but they're like, yeah, look at all these people and 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 Nickelodeon. It had you know Amanda Bynes, Drake and Josh, Keenan Thompson. Mm -hmm. uh, all these stars have come from Nickelodeon. Hell. Huh? Kel. <laughs> and then look what happened. And they just go through like, oh yeah, we were doing things that made us super uncomfortable. The the black children didn't get as many opportunities as anything as anybody else. And so people are just like, oh fuck. This whole thing. Eleven shocking revelations from the docu series about Nickelodeon is like Dan Schneider, which, you know, DJ, you had seen a couple of YouTube things about how he had like a foot fetish and he was kind of just a general creep, right? You knew that. Yeah. For me, this is like I'm I don't mean to belittle the stories or like the experiences of any of the victims. Okay, yeah, let's pause real quick. <laughs> We're gonna make some light because fuck, this is so sad and so serious and this is a comedy show where, and and we're not like super hypercritical thought police type of, not thought police, but rather well, I mean, um, there's not a analysts, whole, right? There's not a whole lot that I personally can add to this. Right, right, right. Like count my lucky stars. I've never been bad touched. Also never been on TV. So <laughs> There you go. Uh, never been part of like a big nickelodeon style production right mm -hmm. but uh the so like i said i don't mean to belittle any of the experiences or any of the victim stories but and i'm glad this conversation is happening but part of me is also saying like this is kind of old news guys like oh yeah I, i've known about this for for mm. like going on a decade now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> with me mainly it's like the dan schneider stuff like that yeah. stuff i had already like known about because it's one of those like kind of like open secret type things right right like it's out there people knew about it it's just it it, it it's only just now like getting traction because you had a uh, was it Jeanette McCurdy she came out with her book right where she kind of talked about it a bit mm. and then now you have like this like shining an even bigger like spotlight on it you know mm, right and mm. and so with this one like the revelations from beyond Jeanette McCurdy's book where she was talking about like he was doing all sorts of crazy things there they were talking about Amanda Bynes and how he like picked her out of like a talent uh like a uh, improv children's improv yeah. uh mm -hmm. laugh factory I think it was Limp laugh factory mm -hmm. like camp and he's like you you're good let's get you on these television shows mm -hmm. come to my house for a pool party <laughs> yeah it, no, we'll get to the creepy clips we'll get to the creepy clips but like the big thing was Drake Bell coming out and being like that oh was, that one was like a new mm. revelation I'm like okay. right yeah. because years and years ago 2004 is when an assault happened and fucking pickle boy that guy uh mm. brian peck he was a you know uh, uh, uh fuck it was a vocal coach on the show so he was a part of that machine he was always around and he was on all that and the amanda show and uh, fucking Drake's dad was like, okay, I'm your manager. We're in this together. I don't know any about this stuff, but you like acting. And I don't like that fucking guy though. And they were like, Hey, you can't say that you don't like that guy. He's, he's a, he's a homosexual man. You're just being homophobic. And, and as a matter of fact, you're kind of being disruptive to everybody. You need, you need whatever, get out of here. And so he was like, Oh fuck. I, I'm don't want to get people pissed off at my son. I'm he's living his dream. He's talking about getting his own show and shit. And so they go, okay, well, Dad, his dad got mad at him. He's like, well, you know, uh, Brian is telling me that you don't want him to help me succeed. So Drake is mad at his dad. And his dad's like, all right, well, I'm going to give you all the paperwork to to mom, his uh, Drake's mom. Hey, 
But above all else, do not make Brian alone with Drake ever. Like, don't do it. And then the next thing he was talking about was, oh, well, my mom didn't want to drive to L.A. for the audition. So, you know, Brian started taking me all the time and he was my buddy and everything was cool. And I slept on his couch. And that's where like a bunch of the news came out. Let me see if I can just pull this part up. Cause because he had been quiet about it for mm-hmm. ever. Like he's never mentioned this before. He was never listed on the court documents. And this is the first time he was revealed to be that person outside yeah. of mm-hmm. his dad and Dan Schneider. He told Dan Schneider that like when it came out, he's like, cause Dan goes, Hey, are you a part of this? And he's like, it's me. And Dan was like, fuck, can I help you? Like he was trying to be helpful. And even Drake says he was trying to be helpful during that time. He's one of the people that actually like, defended Dan which doesn't excuse any of the shit Dan did right Mm -hmm. but the thing was is like he defended him because he helped him after the direct assault but Mm -hmm. ultimately Dan was the one that facilitated the entire environment of this it happened under his watch right it was not a one time thing it was not a oops I no I mean how could it ever be an oops ah like he says the way, and I guess not to make light. He says it was brutal. Like the word that he used was brutal. And then they look at the court documents, and it's just heinous. And he's 15 years old when it happens. This is before uh, Drake and Josh. So anything he saw on Drake and Josh was after this stuff had happened. And so people were like, "What the f- actual fuck?" And then the craziest part about it was that they name dropped a few people that was were defending Brian Peck, who was like new producers. He knew every everybody in Hollywood, and huh? Wilfred Dell, Wilfred Dell, Ryder Strong, and James Marsden were the three that popped out to me of the people that came out to defend Brian Peck in the courtroom with a letter saying this guy's a great guy. And now Wilfred Dell went on his podcast like a month ago and was like, "I was asked a favor. I didn't know what it was about." And I went to the courtroom not knowing what it was about. And then I heard all the things that happened. He was like, what the fuck did I just do? So he actually expressed remorse already. But Drake Bell, he was like, this is fucking. He was like, uh, all of you will have the memory of defending this guy while I'll have the memory of him abusing me. And like he like, he, like dropped, name dropped everybody. He was like, man, fuck everybody. Um People are mad at Josh Peck for not saying anything, even though he has and he showed his support. Everyone got real mad that he didn't say anything right away. Um, but yeah, it's just been this like avalanche of people coming out and referencing things. Uh, they even brought up Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes' old tweets. She had a fake Twitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And part of the accusations that she had was that not only did Dan Schneider get her pregnant, but made her get an abortion at 13 Mm -hmm. and now she can't have children. And these are all, and like there was a a, unrelated, but wasn't like Jamie Spears also. Well, Jamie Lynn Spears, it's alleged that he, that could, that her Mm -hmm. first kid is his, there's allegations that is not, or it's some, another actor or whatever. But like Mm -hmm. the fact that he's even fucking in the conversation, Mm -hmm. Dan Schneider is all sorts of fucked up regarding this and so then people have just been going back and watching like some of the clips that he would put on his show and like they're fucking weird dude yeah p diddy and and all that scene (laughs) well there's one that always stuck out to me because there were like some of these you could go like all right like i'll give you the benefit of the doubt it's children's silly nonsense humor yeah yeah yeah. Um, i'll i'll Go out on a limb and say, okay, you you just didn't see it the same way I see it. Right. But there was one clip that was going around, like, I want to say maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was from Sam and Cat, I Mm want to say. Yeah. Where they're fighting in a dressing room. Mm -hmm. And, like, the, the popular, like gimmick gotcha edit was that like you can see uh Jeanette McCurdy's press. Oh god. And it was it was fake. Like it was just to be like, oh look, I gotcha. Like, like right, right, look right. at this fucking gif. I gotcha. You're mm-hmm. you, <laughs> you you saw child porn now. Oh <laughs> gotcha. Oh gotcha. It In that fake. way. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Real. Right. But still the fact that like isn't it, this a kid's show? Yeah, why are they like, fighting in is... a dressing room mm-hmm. over a bra? Oh like, that's oh yeah. No, there was a lot of weird things going on in that show. Um, uh, Christina t- told us to look a while back ago, like some of the things that they made Ariana Grande do. Yeah, with her, it was the. I think there was like a joke in. Uh, 
I think she was in uh, the. Uh, I'm blanking on the name of the show. It wasn't Sam and Cat. It was the previous one. Victorious. Oh, Victorious. There you go. That like she's like in the middle. And then, like, these guys have, like, water guns. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just, like, all, like, unload the, the water guns, like, on her while she's in the middle. So it's just, like, you know. Well, I'll just, it, I'll your, show your it from. mind goes there. And it's, like, how do you not, like. <laughs> well, let's look at it. So if we're talking about the creepy things you'd see on the internet, the gotchas and whatnot, mm-hmm. we're talking about 2000. 2000- nine 4chan humor that is what you were bringing up yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas like the deep recesses of the internet things we're not proud of what we saw we knew we're aware of i mean this gif of of uh ariana grande has been around forever i'm gonna click away from it because it's gross to me but that picture's been around forever. her getting sprayed uh mm-hmm. in the in the documentary there's a a honey stick that one of the characters on zoe 101 is trying to open and it explodes on Jamie Lynn Spears' face. And literally the cast members were looking at it. The teenage cast members were like, that's a gum shot. And like, so everyone kind of knew. And then you look at the ones going back with like just strictly Ariana Grande, which now there's accusations that she went along with the Dan Schneider thing and she got all the success because she went along with it. But like she was in the midst of all this stuff too. (laughs) I'm soaking wet. Quick, somebody bring me the ocean. No one would ever say that. Why? Because if you were soaking wet and you were upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. And then it's just a compilation of her putting her toe toe in her mouth. And then there's like a lot of toe humor that you start looking into it. You're going to say, JJ? There's a lot of feet stuff. Well, it was one of the things going back to like Ariana Grande, like being the most successful one because mm-hmm. of going along with it. I don't think Jeanette McCurdy phrased it that way, but she did say that there was a lot of favoritism on like the show. Right. Mm-hmm. Because like there was a whole episode where uh Cat she was Cat, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was Cat. I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is beyond my time. <laughs> uh there was a whole episode where Cat is like stuck in a box Mm-hmm. And it's because Ariana wasn't actually there. She was like mm-hmm. busy touring or recording or some mm-hmm. shit. Right. And she was always kind of like, why are we making all these exceptions for her? Like, mm-hmm. I had a country album out at, at the time. And like, they still had her come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I still had to come in and mm-hmm. like work through the show. I wasn't mm-hmm. put in a box. I wasn't like mm-hmm. written out for like XYZ. To, right, to right. Facilitate. Mm-hmm. The growth My of the music career. Yeah, the yeah. career, right? And then, like, there's fucking, it goes even deeper because then there's, like, obviously Dan Schneider in the jacuzzi. And I remember that scene where he's in the jacuzzi where it's Amanda doing the yeah, she interview. Yeah, interviews in the jacuzzi. On the it's Amanda like, this show. is the producer, Dan. And then there's this one where it's Sleep like, and trying to figure out. It's Miranda Cosgrove's 18th birthday, and she's, like, visibly uncomfortable because he keeps trying to touch her and put his arm, well, does put his arm around her and gets all close and weird and, like, then there's accusations that like he tanked her music career because after she started saying no, he's like, all right, well, we're not supporting that shit anymore. And then the like mm-hmm. victorious, there was like a blind item court document where it's like, oh, he never Dan Snyder never wanted to flirt with me because I was already 18 by the time the show started. And then he also labeled me as difficult to work with. And now I can't find a job. Now I can only do promotional stuff and makeup stuff and uh, fragrances because everyone thinks I'm a bitch and everyone thinks I'm terrible. And he kept trying to fuck me. And I said, no. And so he canceled my show three days later after the second time I said, no. And so like, there's like all this shit going on and coming to light. For decades, Dan seemed like he was untouchable, but around 2017, the internet videos around Dan really started gaining momentum. He made them do things that were very weird. There are all these setups that reference porn. Isn't that the guy that interviewed him? Yeah, yeah, that, that guy interviewed him recently. ...on Jamie Lynn's face when she's just 13 years old. Feel these kids' feet. Wow, they're really soft. People were looking back at old scenes and saying, Dan Schneider is obsessed with feet. Check this out. It's all very gross and foul to me. to escape children's feet. Dan Schneider. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, like, now we're getting eaten. They're eating fucking pickles and shit. Like, mm-hmm. the whole thing is just fucking gross. And a lot of people have been talking about it. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. Why can't, think- we, why can't we have nice things? And also, why can't we, like, I guess the thing I'm getting most mad at is Mm. that, first of all, 
people have been making this big deal about protect the children from predators and mm. drag queens and stuff like that. And it's like drag queens aren't doing this shit. It's the fucking producers and that thing. And and I don't think it's a secret fucking Hollywood cabal, but I do think it's a lot of people that are given power by Hollywood that say, I can do these things because I know the people I know and we're willing to defend each other. So there is an element to that. I don't think it's a wider overarching thing. I think it's a smaller segmented thing. Mm. But like people just want to make up all this bullshit about other type of trafficking and 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 mm. migrants and all this other shit and I was like no it's fucking producers that are around children it's parents and being either willfully or ig- just ignorant in general with their own children and it's also like the fact that like uh, people want money and power and are willing to do most anything for it and so you get these it. types of things going on what where are you doing or guys like Dan Schneider can be like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to throw my power around and my weight around and I'm Mr. King. Uh, when really he's just a fucking stupid bastard that nobody fucking likes and everyone hated and nobody respects. But because they were given money and power and he has a couple of good ideas when it comes to children's shows that all ended up being sexual innuendo anyway. It's like, what the fuck are we doing here? So I don't know. I, I, I ramble and I'm just fucking pissed off because they're pointing the finger at the wrong people they're always talking about we got to protect them for the pedophiles and like no those are the pedophiles not these people but those are the pedophiles right there those are the people you need to fucking protect the kids from also the fact that like that like trafficking and and essays and stuff like that happen amongst family members that's like the majority of the time where it happens and so you actually really should be looking after fucking uncle buck or whoever the fuck you know because they're the one more likely to do it or a random cousin or a random family friend so fuck all that shit about all this anti-lgbtq fucking shit because it's the fucking creeps are out there and they're under your nose and you probably know who they are i mean this it yeah, I think it's just Nickelodeon just has a bad rap when it comes to like these sort of things because uh, the running Stimpy guy, John K. There you go. He, that yeah. one was like a confirmed open secret. Like everybody yeah. knew about it. I heard about that. I learned about that one on TikTok yesterday too. Like, that that dude was going on openly, Howard Stern uh-huh. and bragging about. Yeah, yeah. like he's like I got a thirteen year old girlfriend or some shit like that. He like, w- he didn't say that, but like he showed off like a drawing to Howard Stern, mm-hmm. and Howard's like, man, I love the way you draw women because they're always like so buxom and like cute. And he was like, yeah, she's underage too. Like, what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah, bro? Like, <laughs> and and like he was o- even like openly like showing like you know CP to like staff and stuff. And everyone was just kind of like, what the hell, dude? And it was like one of those where like maybe you couldn't like say nothing because, I mean, at the end of the day, he was the showrunner. So he was your boss. Right. And Mm -hmm. Nickelodeon did fire him to their credit. Mm -hmm. Right. They did get rid of him as soon as like humanly possible. I think he had a contract for like two seasons. Right, right. Um, Mm -hmm. But they found whatever excuse it was to Mm -hmm. like, oh, you're not delivering episodes on time. You're gone. Right. Yeah, and no, Christina's in there. Like, as a parent, you know who shouldn't be around your kids. Well, I one of the stories that really <laughs> stuck with me because, like, okay, you can say that it's just mm-hmm. like YouTube drama, like people just trying to get clicks and like throwing some dude's name in the mud. Mm-hmm. One of the stories that I heard early on in like the 2010s or whatever was from a parent that mm-hmm. was like, my kid was an actor was a performer right like she had already done a few commercials and stuff she was already pretty much an established name in the industry like Mm -hmm. she wasn't she'd never had like a starring role or anything but people in the business knew who she was and Mm -hmm. like they would reach out and like i would book her gigs and stuff and i would Mm -hmm. drive her everywhere yeah Uh, she was on one of the dan snyder shows for like as a bit part or a bit player or something Mm -hmm. and she told the story of how like yeah dan invited everyone to like a pool party and was like well i'm going as a parent i'm going right right, i'm not just gonna leave my kid there right yeah nuts yeah and the way she told like my memory on it is foggy but the way she told it like her spider sense went off and was like uh you're not doing any more of this Right, you're done. (laughs) And and I think that parent, like, rubbed Dan the wrong way, and that child, like, didn't really get much work. 
that story stuck with me because even though I'm not a parent, it's like, what do you have to gain from like denying your child work? Right, <laughs> right. Like, it, I, yeah. Like, no, I was just going to say, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, maybe after this, because it's gaining so much momentum now, if, like, they are going to put, like, more restrictions on, like, child actors and stuff. Because, I mean, this isn't new. Mara Wilson had yeah. talked about this at length from her personal experience and mm-hmm. what it's like to be a child actor and why it's so common to see some of them just like hit the hit you know hit the shit right right Mm -hmm. and it's just because yeah a lot of it boils down to like the parents really are exploiting the kid because they are the they are the breadwinners they are the bread makers yeah in the family so for them it's very much a like no mijo no mija you have to tough it out because you need to pay the bills and it's like you can't put that on a child right you, right huh. especially because you don't know who these people are and then you hear these stories about how like they get abused they get exploited and it's like you're willingly putting them through it you know? right they're not your friends that's the thing people think that people in hollywood are their friends or that oh we're making good connections no they're not they're, they're not your friends especially if they're like high-end producers producers aren't your friends producers know who the fuck you are you don't got the cash for them to know who you are why do you think that this person's gonna take care of you and your kid oh uh, i think your kid's very talented that's why we need to have secret summer parties like what the fuck are you talking about and so i've already like you know me i'm a fucking youtube guy like i'm on youtube and i see like my some of my friends have like um mommy youtuber blogs and uh hell even one of them has a dad youtuber blog where he's like a family does his family stuff Mm -hmm. and i'm just like no man and and actually i don't want to take another dark turn but there's another one on tiktok that people are going fucking nuts about um god damn it it's her what's her name like remy or it's like mom and remy or whatever but it's a mother-daughter duo and it's, it's innocuous it's an innocuous channel. It's a mom with her with her baby from like a newborn baby, and then now she's like a toddler, and um, um, and people are accusing her of doing um suggestive content because she's taking requests from the fucking comments and like, oh, maybe you should wear like a blue dress, and then she'll like the comment, and then she'll put a blue dress, and the girl will do like a little spin, and I guess there was one that, and I'm gonna. Mm, I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to hope to God it doesn't come up. I just want to get their name. Oh, it was uh, – fuck, I just remember the name. It's Ren. The little girl's name, Ren. Uh, yeah, Ren and Jacqueline. Um, but I didn't watch the video, and I'm not going to. But it was apparently a frozen honey test where it's in, like, a bottle or whatever. You freeze the honey, it gets, like, I think it's viscous or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's this little girl eating it, which is like, oh – you know, it's a little treat for a child or, or yeah. mm-hmm. it's something else. And a lot of people were like, no, this is bad. This is giving me uncomfortable vibes. Like Christina was saying in the chat, like, you know, who should be not with your kids. And this lady is putting her own fucking child in danger for a little bit of fucking TikTok cash. Mm-hmm. Because well, once again, she's the breadwinner that was in the family. That YouTube cracked down on like not too long ago, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Where, right. Like, people were uploading like breastfeeding videos and stuff, mm-hmm. and like the creeps found them. Yeah. And then and they started making money, and then it was like, well, yeah. <laughs> it it's like I know they cracked down on the in the sense of like if it is like content like geared towards like children, mm-hmm. like you can't leave comments, you can't do that. But it's one of those where, like, stuff like this only goes oh so far. And let's face it, like, they're going to find, like, loopholes around it. They're going to find a way. And I think that's, like, part of the problem that it's it's going to hit the point where, like, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Right. And we're just going to eventually hit a point where it's going to be like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't have, like, child actors. We shouldn't have children on YouTube. And like that right now, that's the future it's heading towards just because it's it's really hard to find a solution for this. Right. And, and they're saying in the chat, like, wasn't there rules for kids and, and parents? It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. there should be a parent with with their child at every uh, moment on set. But then like a producer would be like, hey, I need to talk to your kid real quick and you're going to get in the way. And they're like, cool, got it. Well, be right back. I'll be by the snacks. Mm-hmm. And then the kids, the producers, you know, in these situations, it's seeming like, it's mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, in order for you to make it, 
you know, really in life, uh, uh, you need to fire your dad and you need to hire me to be your, your dad and I'm going to mm-hmm. adopt you. P. Diddy. Usher. Yeah. Justin Bieber. Yeah. We've seen this story already time and time again. And now we're starting to see the formula, which means we can fucking avoid it. Because like they mentioned here, uh, the Daddy 05 guy, where they were just abusing their kids. There's a whole other oh ones of YouTubers God, no, abusing yeah, their kids. Story with that dude. Is. It's like, no, it's fucking crazy that... You know, fuck AI. AI can be the children. Is it? Would that be okay if, if we need child stars? We're gonna make them fucking AI children. We're gonna. You know what? Actually, I have. We can pull an American sniper and just have dolls. <laughs> At JJ. Bradley Cooper plays all the children just like <laughs> as dolls. JJ, <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. All <laughs> children should be Renezme, but the original version. Oh my. All children should be Renezme from the original Twilight puppet. That's how all the children actually. Should look. I completely forgot about that. You should never completely forget about it because no, she's lurking. No, I'm mad. Why did you? <laughs> she's that? lurking everywhere. <laughs> Why did you remind me of that? I was so comfortable. You know, that also that. has nasty implications because didn't the wolf boy like. Yes, he did. Yeah, there he, he is making he sweet. Marked her. Holding to her. He imprinted on her there you go that's what they got imprinting but yeah but the thing is like it's like so yeah we're not even safe there God <laughs> i'm telling you in we the, just need bradley cooper in the context to puppeteer every child in the context of the not Twilight literal birds. child <laughs> right right puppet child um pr- uh the printing on a um, bit like it doesn't necessarily always mean like uh, he's gonna bang her. It, like yeah, it, it, <laughs> Jesus it, Christ. It can mean like a brotherly bond, a sisterly bond, stuff mm-hmm. like that. It sounds like J.K. Rowling level retconning. Yeah, I don't appreciate it. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually it not J.K. Rowling. A, it's not a, a it's not a retcon. <laughs> it's it, it's there. Don't ask me Look, why I know this. Hey, just hey. trust me on it. No puppet right, babies. Yeah. Puppet babies is what we're doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just like how. Dumbledore was gay all along. Like <laughs> Dumbledore was he always was. gay. He was. He called the big threat the gay the, the great gay. swallowing. <laughs> the gay? Is that you, he called the big threat the gay. The gay you know, the great swallowing, yeah. The, it, he called it that. So that, like no, the signs were always there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I wouldn't as a straight man, I don't perceive that as a threat. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> Harry, <laughs> did you put your name in the goblet of fire? Versus oh, put your name in the goblet of fire. And then the Ben Harry's gonna be played by this plastic baby who's grown up now. See yeah. And sounds like Rocket Raccoon for no reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what you mean. <laughs> no, I didn't put it in. I didn't put my name in the goblet of fire. Oh, I'm getting that leg. <laughs> <laughs> but moral of the story is I'm not doing children YouTube anymore. I was gonna have my own with that little kid who makes the toys, Ryan's toys. Right. Yeah. That that shit cracks me up because he's like forty five years old now, his voice is dropped. <laughs> I'm waiting for him. <laughs> so, I'm waiting for him to like, you know, like like start gaming. So that way I can like find him in his Fortnite and then just like cyber bully him. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you cyber bully? Oh he's a billionaire. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, but no, Ryan's world is like a little kid from He's like... He's got a mustache now. Yeah, from like 10 years ago. And there he is as a little baby. Mustache. And he opened all these little uh, mystery packs mm-hmm. and his parents are already rich, one assumes. So that's why he was able to get all the toys and he became the new kid sensation. And now they try to make him a cartoon to make sure that he's not like... Uh, oh my God! Is that him now? No, that's his dad. Okay. Oh my God! <laughs> Oh my god, he's got so big. He's got so large. Uh, hold on, Ryan. He looks world. older than me. He's got like five mortgages. <laughs> hey, his dad looks pretty young. Let's just put it that way. There, yeah, there he is right there. Yeah, that's a grown ass man right there. Look at this kid. Yeah, that, that kid looks yeah. at that kid looks at Playboys that are hidden hidden Playboys in the forest. Mm-hmm, I Hell did. yeah! I said. I knew. Well, hold on, hold on. Am I doing the thing that the producers do by sexualizing the children? What? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, we'll find out how old he is first. Ah, hold on, Ryan. We're all the age. No, he's still a child. I'm sure. I don't think he's an adult. Uh, I don't know, man. It was uh, like ten years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, he's twelve now, as of 2023. Barely? Yeah. yeah. No, he was a literal baby when he started doing this stuff. Mm, yeah. I thought he was 12 when I heard about him. Like, no. Shit. Oh. <laughs> no, dude, he was I don't perceive. Well, to, well, to be fair, I thought he was his dad. So that's how much I don't pay attention to Ryan's world. So, mm-hmm. so point is, 
Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Playboy is also problematic. They had underage girls posing nude. What's her Wait, name? What? Uh, what's her name? Um, God dang it. Uh, was it Brooke Shields that did it? Brooke, well, Brooke Shields. Uh, Brooke Shields definitely did have a like an underage well, she photography was a child thing. Actor, so. It but the play back around. Uh-huh. <laughs> Stop having children act, okay? We're going back to Renezme, and and we're not doing Ryan's tour. We're going back to Plastic Baby. I know that. And Renezme. Like, all right, so like side tangent, uh, but get the- us out of here, JJ. I'm t- <laughs> I almost went down the dark path by saying Ryan looks a Playboy's, but he's twelve. Which then again, as as a boy at twelve years old, oh, I, was I totally about- found. Playing, I, yeah, okay, I had- way before way, that. Yeah. We're not f- giving it to him, nor are we saying he should look for it. I'm just saying at that age, he might have happened upon it. Was Brooke Shields, it. and it was Brooke Shields yeah. because I saw that commercial for the documentary mm-hmm. where it was like oh yeah you were the hottest baby ever and it's like what the fuck are, it, yeah no that, that's what they were they were saying like she I'll, I'll find some of the ads go ahead it's cause she she well yeah she was a child actor and she did like a like a movie where it was like a like like I guess to use the word like Lolita where it was like a dude that was like like trying to like hook up with her like or like taxi her. driver oh oh JJ I'm sorry it was worse what being a sexy baby is a simplified version to what they actually said, which oh, ended up being oh 13 year old Brooke Shields as sultry mix of all American virgin and whore. <laughs> hold on, hold on, guys. Let me join you in that groan. One, three, two, one. <laughs> Yikes. I get zooks. Words fail me. <laughs> I, it's moments. And like this, this is us. We're talking it's about moments words. like this where I regret having the ability to read. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, but I know Girls Gone Wild got in trouble because of that. That's why <laughs> you never. Christ. Yeah, but they never got like uh-huh. they never verified. Yeah, it's because I think with them it was. That. I can't even hear steel drums without thinking of <laughs> Girls Gone Wild anymore. It's because I think with them it was that they just show up to like you know like the beach, the parties or whatever, and they're just like, "Hey, flash your titties or whatever," feeding and like, people alcohol. And then like yeah, yeah, and then the crowd goes for it. But the thing is, you don't know if that person in the crowd is of age because yeah. it was really easy to sneak into these things yeah and that's especially during spring break when it's like and that in the exact, in the 90s and 2000s and that's exactly what happened to him um but to- <laughs> sorry i'm sorry <laughs> mopey corbett someone typed that and said yep let's print it <laughs> that's the thing that had editors that had editors god damn it that's a great gimmick print it <laughs> Vince, uh, what are my, you doing here? My, <laughs> my first kiss by Brooke. She, like, fucking, like, what were they? Yeah, no. That was the one where I'm like, what the fuck did they do to this girl? Because I didn't know too much about her. Mm-hmm. And then you watch the, the fucking trailer for the documentary. Not even the documentary. Just the trailer for it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't want to watch this. But uh, like, to take this on a slightly weird tangent. So <laughs> weird. I think we're already on the weird train. Well, it, it's still, it, it's on the same track. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, So... Girls Gone Wild got in trouble for this, for not vetting people and not IDing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. There was this game. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. In, like, the PS3 era. I think it was 2, dude. Was it PS3? It, it might have been PS2. tail end of the PS2. And- it, is it, does it have to do with Extreme? No. No. Oh, okay. no. different game. Oh, yeah, no. do you know what I'm thinking of, though? Uh, no, 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 yeah, this, <laughs> I was thinking of BMX Triple X. No, 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 wasn't no, no. that? This, this, this had real people. Oh, there, there we go. Oh, the chat, the, the chat guy got game. it. There you go. Okay, keep going, keep going. Right. We didn't say it yet. So it's the guy game for. Okay, so yes, it was PS2. It was PS2 era. Um, it was basically just like a quiz show. Yeah, it was like right. trivia. Yeah, I want to punch this guy's face. Oh, oh well. So, <laughs> wait, no. I, I'm actually not sure on this one. I believe. When I originally heard the story, I was under the assumption that he was the owner and operator of the studio. Uh-huh. I could be wrong, and he he's just, he's a, just host. a host. Yeah. He was just like some dude that was hired to do it. But uh, this game was printed, published, and mm-hmm. like it was just trivia. Mm-hmm. It was just like, hey, press X for like for this answer, press mm-hmm. circle for this answer, press triangle mm-hmm. for this answer, blah, blah, blah. And if you got the answer right... You'd get titties. You'd get flashed. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And it's a M for mature, so it's like naked titties or just like, yeah, oh my yeah. God. Naked titties. Um, well, we're going to watch a playthrough. Well, not like all of it, but like just right. so you can see some of the. 
things. This game is Bent. was pulled from mm-hmm. the shelves like while it was still, you know, relevant. Uh-huh. When it was still PS2 era. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> was pulled from the shelves, recalled, and is banned. Like, you can't mm-hmm. technically legally buy it. Really? Yeah. Because they didn't vet all of the people on there. Oh, my mm-hmm. God, dude. And there's at the very least one, but I think there's two underage oh my god you don't know which one it is yeah it, it could be nora hottie number two who's it age 20 be. who's a major fashion whose major is fashion merchandising her best feature is her tray full of shots and she likes abstinence self-restraint and gin soaked orgies mm-hmm. and she dislikes consequences gravity and inertia something tells me i don't think that's true <laughs> At least one of those is a lie, and I'm mm-hmm. leaning towards the gin-soaked orgies, yeah. because not many people like gin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's just 2000. Especially in America, maybe in England. But <laughs> Hold on, with Stephanie's hottie number three, I want to know what her stats are. Kinesiology, her tray full of shots. Do all of them just have trays full of shots? shots? <laughs> people with no spirit, bars with no spirits, your mama, friendship beads. I don't know what these stats are, but... They're like baseball stats. I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, um, Jesus Christ, dude. But yeah, they got in trouble for that. That mm-hmm. was all recalled. The studio, all of the developers in that studio were actually pretty talented. They were <coughs> really good developers, but they had a shitty owner. Right. Shitty owner and operator. That owner and operator somehow, by like the sheer luck of fools, uh-huh. fell ass backwards into a contract with Nintendo. Oh my god. And Nintendo hired them. It's Nintendo censored. paid their bills and paid for like their server fees and whatnot. Owner and operator decided to create a porn site on Nintendo's dime and then when someone brought that to the attention of Nintendo they're like the fuck bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dude. So then Nintendo outright bought the studio. So now it's fully, like, 100% under the Nintendo banner. Nintendo owns it. Uh-huh. It's right here in good old Austin, Texas. What? It's Retro Studios. The people that helped develop Mario Metroid. Kart 8, Metroid Prime, <laughs> and... Made, made this game? <laughs> Donkey Kong Country Topical Freeze. <laughs> made the guy game mm-hmm. with censored titties <laughs> and perhaps underage titties. Which, once again, they were censored, but still, I don't know if they were uncensored or if there's an uncensored version they of the game. Uncensored. I think in the game, like, yeah, it was like, you had to, like, keep playing the game and eventually you unlock, you unlock yeah, the, the uncensored ones. Oh, oh, well, there you go. It, I don't know what's going on here. I'm, I'm just I'm just playing the game. It's the same clip over and over. But the point is, I hope to God that, that she... <laughs> not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> Please be 18. <laughs> that, that's a better way to say that when I was probably going to get myself in Damn trouble Damn it, with. Rick and Bobby. <laughs> uh, we got to do ads real quick, and then we got one more thing. We'll be right back. All right. Hey, folks, do you have sex? I do sometimes, and I know a lot of you out there do too. And here's the thing, folks. What I'm about to tell you is not just about sex, because here's the thing. We, we all need a sexual performance boost every so often. And, and we've talked about our fine folks here, our, our, our newest sponsor, Joy Mode at usejoymode.com forward slash max20. And they got a new page right here that shows you all the delightful things that you can do right there. And here's the thing. While we're having sex and not at the you're not supposed to interact with the advertisement, Christina. Anyway. She may not be having sex, but here's the thing. The moment she is prepared to have sex. What? We're having sex? We are having so much. Okay, you guys are in the ad now. We are having sex here at the Mexilence. Not like together, but like amongst our own devices. We have enough rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'll take nice. the sweaty laundry room. Hey, okay. You, you get the weird laundry room. You get the closet. And I get to use my bedroom. Wait, why do I got to come out of the closet? Well, because, no, you could, you got to go in first. And I still got to come out of it. Event, no. Nobody said you had to. Because if you use joy mode, baby, if you use joy mode, you're going to be in there for a long, long time. Because here's the thing, folks. Joy mode 
has 10 doses per pack, and the Sexual Performance Booster supports a healthy blood flow, erection quality, and firmness, stamina, and performance. It contains science-supported doses of L-citrulline, arginine, nitrate, and testing, and vitamin C. And you take it before sex for a booster. Take it daily to support cardiovascular health, athletic performance, in and out of the gym, and healthy blood pressure and erectile function. Well, here's the thing, folks. I was talking about the mouse-based theme park I went to. Well, guess what? I took a pack, not because I was going to do things at Club 33, but more importantly, because I, I needed just a little uh, a little kick in the action, a little kick in the pants. Uh, and that actually helped me get through a big chunk of the day because of the stamina it provided, the blood flow, the quality of the blood flow. And you know what? Just so happens sometimes, you know what? You might have, you might just be like, oh, I'm vibrating a little too much and you're having a good time. I have a beautiful girlfriend. I look at her and all of a sudden my juices are flowing, but not in an inappropriate way because I am at a theme park. This is a weird episode. Point being... Point being, if you use coupon code MEX20, you can get 20% off and free shipping off of the Sexual Performance Booster. 102 reviews, 5-star ratings across the board. Don't get confused and don't get all distracted with those nasty 2-bit boner pills you get from the gas station. That's that's nonsense. Get something that's a little natural. Get yourself something that's going to be a little more consistent. And get yourself that's going to be a little bit more, 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 more better for you and your body. So be sure to get 20% off as well using joy mode use joymode.com forward slash mex 20 to get that sexual performance booster dang skippy hey folks here's the thing you were just talking about <laughs> how you have a hand sanitizer that's made for men well here's the thing folks we've been for men this entire time Manscaped.com has been a sponsor of the Mexicans for a long, 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 long time. The, Such a long time. Such a long time. The best in men's grooming is right on the website. And here at the Mexicans, we believe that as such. Because here's the thing. Once again, I've mentioned that I went to a mouse-based theme park. And one of the things that is a staple beyond the shed travel bag where I keep all my accoutrements is the fact that like years ago at this point, Manscaped provided us with the Platinum Package 4.0. That was so long ago. We were like, oh, then the 4.0, that's such that's such old hat now. There's the 5.0 already. It says right there at the thing below. But that's not what I'm talking about at this very moment because here's the thing. A go-to for when I know I'm going to walk. I walked, what did I walk? I walked 10, no, 12 miles that first day. And I walked seven miles the second day. And I am a large, thick, heavy boy. And here's the thing about that. Chafing mm -hmm. is a huge concern. But not with the Manscaped Boxers 2.0. Because I have the 1.0s. And the 1.0s are holding strong with my thighs rubbing together. But the 2.0 is the next level with that jewel pouch. Mm -hmm. the, I was going to say trademark, but it's the little R. I don't even know what the R stands for. Mm -hmm. Anti-chafing smooth flat lock seams, cooling moisture wicking fabric, sand jihad wrist waistband, front fly opening tagless 95% micromodal 5% elastane pouches a little bit more 95% viscose 44.5% elastane 0.5 nylon machine wash cold line dry and imported it keeps your junk nice and good as well as all the other products that come with manscaped Another one I use just about every day is the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. That one stayed the same since they last gave it to us. That comes with the Beard Hedger, the AC adapter and USB-C cable, the beard shampoo, the beard conditioner, the beard oil, the beard balm, the travel bag. And here's the thing, folks. I forgot the dang cube for my phone charger. But here's the thing. You get the AC adapter and USB-C. It's universal. So when you have that USB-C phone, you have USB-C headphones like I did, and I forgot the cable for it, I use my Manscaped charger. <laughs> so Manscaped is the future, is the present, is the now. So be sure to use coupon code MEX20 for 20% off and free shipping on Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping using coupon code MEX20 with Manscaped.com. Manscaped.com, your balls, your face, and I will thank you for using Manscaped.com. Using coupon code MEX20 for 20% off free shipping at Manscaped.com. Your balls, your face, and I will thank you. Thank you for using coupon code MEX20 for 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com. Your balls, your face, and I will thank you. Manscaped, your balls will thank you. 
Bex 20, 20% off free shipping. 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com using coupon code MEX20. Coupon code MEX20 for 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped, your balls, your face, and I will thank you. And we're back. I forgot to ask you guys to get me a beer. Oh, well, we'll get to the show. No, no. It's IPA. I don't want to do Fire Eagle. That's too much bread. Anyway, folks. Liquid ah! bread. Oh, he became a Fire Eagle. That Man, that was such a heavy topic. Mm-hmm. Beforehand, mm-hmm. so we're gonna talk about BMX Triple X now. And I'm kidding. <laughs> so it, it was a, it was a bicycle game where you got titties, and then there was a volleyball mm-hmm. game where there was titties, and mm-hmm. then there was okay. Can I? T- <laughs> I'm gonna save that for the excellence. Which, by the way, we have a Patreon. Newgrounds games. Not the Newgrounds games. Oh, we've talked about what was it? Orgasm Girl. Orgasm Girl. God mm-hmm. dang, that's a. I that, need to be on an episode of The Sexcellence then. Well, you're leaving tomorrow, so I'd have you record one, and I'm too tired to do one right now. Mm, nah, well, it's okay. Well, well, we'll see when the stars align. Well, the idea is that I was just going to mention one of my not proudest, uh, let's just say, arousements as a child mm-hmm. was from Tony Hawk's Underground 1. Mm-hmm. There's uh, nothing sexual oh, in there. Go, uh, and, <laughs> nope, well, and a, nope. There's a strip club in the game. Ah. Well, it wasn't the stripper, which was the even weirder part. Next up, we're moving on. Here's the thing. It's not, it's, it's about. Nuke Nukem for me. It's about. Ooh, shake it, baby. <laughs> it's about not tainting our childhoods, which this next topic. Mm-hmm. Marcos is getting mad at the world mm-hmm. because he said everything is a fucking a redo, a remake, a remaster. He had a whole list of them that I wanted to bring up and I, I just thought about it right now because he was the one that brought up a majority of the topic. Mm-hmm. But um, let's see, what were what were the ones that he talked about? Because uh, I know for a fact that they're doing an original show called Arc, the animated series, which nobody's excited about. They brought back X-Men. That's a video game. 97. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a Roadhouse Mm-hmm. Roadhouse. Bombed. Millennials and Gen Z want original movies and TV, not remakes, says new streaming survey. And that's Wonka. And, uh, oh, that was Mean Girls with Renee Rapp. Mm-hmm. So, like, everything is just being remade over and over. Oh, uh, Good Times. <laughs> no, it wasn't Good Times. Yeah, Good Times is now an animated cartoon. Dynamite is now an animated cartoon. That's that looks like Rocket Lions once said. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me, let me look it up. Hold on. Good Times. Cartoon, yeah, no, it looks exactly like. But I don't mind Rocket these Power. like sequels, Look at- and remakes. Godzilla <laughs> minus one was awesome. But Godzilla is like the James Bond of monsters. There's just always gonna be them. Mm-hmm. That's okay. But like Good Times, no one was. At- good Times was a moment in time, literally a moment in Good Time, where it was about a family. Well, no, that was Jefferson's. Never mind. I was going to say who moved up to an apartment in the sky. (laughs) They finally got a piece of the pie. No, no, no. But that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Did they need a reboot? Reboot, reboot, remake, whatever. Um, Star Wars. People were talking about Star Wars, getting another acolyte. (laughs) Everything Mm -hmm. is old and all of thing old is new again but like star wars shouldn't count because acolyte's like a whole new like thing though well acolyte has colored people so people are mad about it oh did you hear about that no yeah <laughs> so people are like oh wait wait acolyte sucks Is the main character a twilight no it as far like as he i said could they were tell. colored oh oh no no, oh. no i'm talking about galaxy right night right now Oh, not far, far away. No, 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 the galaxy close, close. <laughs> uh, right now, now. Uh, hold on. This was in a galaxy right oh, now <laughs> in a galaxy, this one. <laughs> because, yeah, there's people with dreads mm-hmm. and lightsabers and mm-hmm. uh, not a, a non-white lead. And so it's woke now. So mm-hmm. I don't like when my Star Wars oh, is like woke. X-Men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gambit's fucking gay, guys. When did that happen? He's gay? Bro, have you seen his outfit? Yeah. yeah. Someone, someone, and I it's quote. It's got hot pink in it. Yeah, someone said, <laughs> and I quote, he is dressed like bisexual lighting. <laughs> but isn't it, it's in 97, though. That's fine. That's yeah, that's why. Homosexuals were invented in 97. Huh. Yeah. I'm talking about the night. Well, actually, every. <laughs> talking about night, gay 97. Uh, every, every version of Gambit's powers make him make things glow pink right yeah, he, like, yeah and he holds it's, hold, never, he, it's he, never been a different color <laughs> he holds a long staff he, he wears a, tr- a perv trench coat he carries <laughs> a big stick yeah yeah no no but people were mad at him because he uh was wearing a crop top 
Wait, that is that is a crop that, top. There it is. There he is. Well, that's the nineties, dog. That's what I'm like, saying. Uh, that's uh, what people uh, were saying. But like, yo, he's literally the bi flag. No, Gabbett is a Cajun. All Cajuns are a little gay. One assumes, you know. <laughs> All Canadians are a little gay, so Wolverine... He's had that shirt since he was five. He's just... yeah. <laughs> exactly, because it says Rock. Rock X on it. Mm. No, who... Like... Not everything is woke. Power Rangers had a... a but, I was going to say, I, I was gonna say it in the 90s version of this. It's much of a stretch that I mean, the Red Rangers got, like, Hitler quotes on The this whole quote. thing with the X-Men <laughs> is that, like, it's ra- like racism, like... The mutants. Yeah, it's always yeah, been so a whole thing about uh, yeah. So no, these people are dumb. <laughs> no, no, that's and that's the thing. People are like, well, you guys have no media literacy. No, you're dumb. You're dumb individuals who don't who th- really. This guy. Oh, no, 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 not you guys. Yeah, this guy. These homosexuals. No, this guy right here turns everything hot pink. Holds a big stick and has big fuck me pumps, boots, go go boots, a little cod piece thing above his junk. He's got little stripies on his tights. That's the thing. All if you the lines saw... on that figure draw me to his crotch. Exactly. Hold on. I'm going to look at this Gambit cosplay. I just want to see if anybody can look straight in a Gambit cosplay. Nope. 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 Especially nope. Nope. Definitely nope. Nope. Now, I'm not saying oh, they are gay. Oh, wait, that, that last Go one. back to that Go one. Back to the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I look. I'm not. I'm not saying that they are gay. I'm saying that that the, one makes me feel. Well, this one makes me feel something. <laughs> uh, that one too. Mm-hmm. Look at look at this guy. Yeah, mm. but the one with the jail cell confused me. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, that one. That look at this guy right here. Nice. The one with the jail cell made me feel joy mm. and other emotions that are new and confusing to me. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I can hear Prince noises coming out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, he's got the cigarette. Too. Some bitch. Oh, oh yeah. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Take care of some. Oh no, JJ. <laughs> well, you make sure you use the la- the man soap. Or the, the what was it? The man the the manitizer. The, be sure to use the manitizer and and I was gonna say come in the tub. Don't do that. Don't you actually. You no, just don't do that at all. It's all pipes. It's all. P- <laughs> ah. Anyway, just rinse. Just make sure you rinse. Are you saying that you would let them bone? No. Beast is more my flavor. <laughs> Hairy man in underwear? I mean, come on, guys. Uh, don't, well, don't come on, guys. Well, I guess that's the premise is come on, guys. Beast, X-Men, 97. This is an erotic episode. I didn't mean it to be. <laughs> yeah. This is my guy right here. Shit. If I was buff and sexy, I would paint myself blue and go as Beast everywhere I went. The lab coat is a statement. Uh, yeah, exactly. Lab coat. I actually have this action figure. <laughs> lab <laughs> coat. Some some vials of material. Yes, I just mansplained the manitizer. You're goddamn right. Well, no, that's the thing. People are saying everything is woke now. The the Power Rangers were was it PC back in the day mm-hmm. because they had an Asian lady and a black man with missing fingers and uh, never mind the fact that they were both the yellow and black ranger. Mm-hmm. Respect. We're gonna they, we, hey, progress. <laughs> progress takes some, t- some time. All right. And then they had three white individuals. Right. That's why in the next season they flipped them. Gotcha. <laughs> they were like a little too on the nose. And then what's his name? Uh, the Frog Ranger was some sort of ethnicity. Was he like Filipino? Yeah, he was Asian. Okay. They flipped him. Yeah. Gotcha. And then Billy was gay, but nobody knew, but they bullied him for it. And mm-hmm. so, and then you got like, I'm pretty sure Phil and Lil, they were, well, Phil and Lil's mom was gay. We knew that. Um, were anybody in Dragon Ball Z gay? Like right off the bat? I feel like that was like a missed one where like there's got to be a gay character. No, right. Frieza's probably the closest. Yeah. Thing. Maybe. Uh, no, Ginyu. The, the Ginyu, the whole Ginyu force, like, mm. they fuck each other. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't think that that was possible, but that's very likely. I'm just saying. There's a lot of... Saying? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Vegeta, no, Vegeta made love to a woman and had a kid. Mm-hmm. Not to say that he couldn't be on the bi spectrum. He had a big shirt that said "Badman" on it. Which, that being said, if I saw it in a gay he club, I'd hit on that dude. Fancy gay mustache in GT. That's true. He did have a mustache. he did have a daddy mustache as well. So a pure Saiyan's hair doesn't change after birth, except for beards. And mustaches. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy goes to clubs. Oh, yeah, Zarbon. 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 Yeah, Which one was yeah. Zarbon? <laughs> Zarbon was the green was guy. The, mm-hmm. He was totally K for Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Zarb- yeah Zarbon wanted, yeah, Zarbon wanted it for sure. Point is, 
gay people have existed everywhere. It's great. Particularly the X-Men. The X-Men are both co- the colored folk and the homosexuals. And now they can be the... Mis- Actually, they were the Hispanics in um, uh, Logan. <laughs> they literally were the Hispanic. They were all half Mexican. And so everybody was Mexican. So hold on. Let me... I don't know. if Should I allow Little Twink <laughs> in the chat? Nah, I think so. In, sure. in reference to Zarbon? Sure. There you go. <laughs> and, and a little gay will allow that as well. But um, the, the red one. Um, Bulma uh, had a thing. Oh no! I'm not. Red, do you, does he mean the the big meaty? What was his name? The other one with Zarbon. I don't remember oh, that guy. Uh, Dodoria. Dodoria, uh, yeah. Dodoria. <laughs> or does he mean Jace? Jace from Ginyu. Jace from Ginyu. Well, this guy. Oh, uh, this guy could also be gay as well. well like, no, I don't think Jay, Jace is just Australian. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point is, we're not going to be spending our entire. Uh, afternoon uh, or evening, uh, guessing which people were gay or not. We are, however, going to look at the new trailer for the new property, Chapsu guys. Was totally gay for TM. That, oh, oh, yeah, that was his gay little buddy for mm-hmm. sure. They they went everywhere. They hung out on his young on his shoulder. Yeah, totally. I was just wondering. I never put two and two together or thought about it. But I will say that a lot of bisexual people uh, found something in themselves from this film that we're talking about. The Mummy. Yes, the mummy. No, the <laughs> we already know the mummy was the thing that made most people bisexual. Made switching sides. Oh, <laughs> oh man, the cast of the mummy, everyone handsome and beautiful in their own way. Brendan Fraser oh. on screen, switching sides. <laughs> the mummy cast. Rachel Vice on screen, switching sides. <laughs> Hold on, it was the mummy too, right? Particularly because no, the first one, dude. Did the first one have this guy? Yeah. yeah oh, okay, really? then yes, it was this guy. Oh, man, everybody. Look at this guy. Look at this beefcake of a man. And then you got this mystery lady. A nux and a moon. <laughs> and then you go, oh, gee, oh, that's her again. There, Oh, there you Oh, my God. How, yeah. All of our sexualities were Maybe influenced. Bond. Yeah, look at it. And then there's uh-huh. girls that like this, date guys that look like this to this day. That's uh-huh. me now. Exactly. <laughs> and then there's guys that were... We're going to throw your voice. Fool your friends. Have fun at parties. <laughs> And people are into goth girls like this. Where do you think that the goth girl came from? That is one of the prototypes. So if you like goth girls, think was it Lydia? Yeah, that's yeah. Lydia. Yeah, and so now there's a new jam. And I actually didn't see this movie because it scared me as a kid. And then I watched it for Sam Yancey shit on the Double Toasted show a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I thought, eh, this so- movie's all right. Eh. Speaking of goth girls and like awakenings and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed. I had a crush on Clarissa from Clarissa Explains It All. Oh, yeah? Wait, she wasn't a goth girl. She wasn't a goth girl, but one of her favorite movies was Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. Every episode that they had a chance to reference Beetlejuice, be like, oh, yeah, we're going to take you out and you can rent whatever movie you want. Even Beetlejuice? She would always say that. Interesting. So, like, I picked up on that and I was like, well, I got to watch fucking Beetlejuice. I like. (laughs) And Nickelodeon had an animated Beetlejuice show. Right, yeah. I liked the Beetlejuice cartoon, but that point in time like i didn't feel anything for lydia other than she's beetlejuice's little buddy right and then, <laughs> and then there's clarissa as a goth kid yeah. right there so but then when i was old enough to notice girls in particular clarissa uh-huh. and old enough to know how to rent a movie uh after you know the whole empire strikes back debacle uh-huh. <laughs> or no return of the jedi where like i can't find that one particular Star Wars movie mm. in any video store that mom takes me to. <laughs> oh my god! Once I learned how to rent movies and notice girls, noticed that Clarissa liked Beetlejuice. I was like, "There's a movie about Beetlejuice, that cartoon that I like." Right. <laughs> I gotta find me this movie. <laughs> right. And in the words of Christina in the chat, every bad bitch likes Beetlejuice. I am not a bad bitch. JJ, a bad bitch. Clarissa. One would say at the time when we were children, if we had the vocabulary, a bad bitch. I, I think my girlfriend, I think, likes Beetlejuice. Oh, she does. She does have a Lydia. F- Wait, no. That's like, Halloween Town. Hey, Hold I on. Like, hey, I like Beetlejuice, too. Does that make me a bad bitch, too? No. No? No, you're just a bitch. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was so mean. I'm sorry. That, we, we rarely, I actually had this thought. We rarely get mean to each other on the show, <laughs> but when we do, it's pretty mean. But anyway, there's a second one now and has Jenna Ortega, the new goth girl, and it has, um, what's her other one? When, no, what's the Moira Rose from Shit's Creek? What's her real name? Fuck, what's her real name? Someone's going to put it in the chat. Point is, just watch the trailer. Nope. Warner Brothers, I'm out. 
<laughs> oh, canceled to save money. Dale. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, they put the song. Yeah, they put it slow, which makes me already hate it now. <laughs> of all the things they could have done, and and the, and the thing is that I wish it were I taking. I think they're playing into it. No, that's every, every yeah, that's every trailer. Oh, I know, oh. but I don't. Th but they don't make a reference, or like they're. Play I don't know if they're taking the piss out of it. I don't know. I would be bad if they did. Wait, I mean, you guys seem pretty excited for the reference, and I know what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah, looks good, man. <laughs> Look at him. He's an old man and he's Beetlejuice. Why did Beetlejuice age all of a sudden? He's dead. No, but he's not supposed to age. No, you can age when you die. No, yeah. he never used around a for just shrunken heads yeah. and shit. Well, huh. he was he was never around for hundreds of years beforehand, right? Isn't that part of the lore? We don't. Why is he an old know. Michael Keaton? Yeah, we, we don't, don't actually really know, know how old Beetlejuice is. Yeah, like it's there's just like fan theories and stuff. It's implied. That like he's like a, like died on like suicide and stuff like that, but it's never outright like said in the movie. It, he's the Joker he, of mm -hmm. the Ghost World. Right? Oh, yeah. that's why I hate him because I hate the Joker. <laughs> We've already discussed this. Tommy hates animated films. I hate the Joker, and uh, I don't know why somewhat Mopey Corbin is saying milfs and bilf galore. What's bilf? <laughs> Beetlejuice. I'd like the fuck. <laughs> is that what that is? But there's uh, Jenna Ortega, and there you go, mm -hmm. Catherine O'Hara, which she makes everything better. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. if I can watch this. I mean, are you guys excited for what you've seen? Yeah, dude, I've been hyped for this since they announced that the cast was going to come back. Yeah, that's the thing that gets mm -hmm. me, like, hyped for it, that as much of the cast as they could get comes back. Right. Mm -hmm. Um that's always a positive sign that means that one they're as fond of the project as we the fans are mm -hmm. and two that like they had a positive experience there mm -hmm. right so that means that you know like they they're going to give it their all they're going to actually they're not going to phone it in yeah because like i mean one big thing that I, like i like pointing out about movie is that like the Des agreed. The De yeah, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at the Des. Michael <laughs> yeah. Keaton could still hit it even 36 years later. Is that the movie's called Beetlejuice. He's in all the marketing. He's in everything. My man's only in the movie for like 10 fucking minutes. I think that's why I got upset about it. I was like, he's Beetlejuice. Where's Beetlejuice? And, and It's I, not his story. And I will say. It's not his story. I will say one of the things that actually to this day creeps me out is the stretched faces. Those triangle mm -hmm. fucking. Yeah. They, that, the holes in the <laughs> eyes. Yeah. yeah. I hate it so much. It, it creeps me out so hard. So I w wouldn't be surprised if with this one, they're going to lean more into it. That it's, like, it's clear. People wanted more Beetlejuice, so maybe in this one, we might actually get more Beetlejuice. Is that a good or a bad thing, though? Because it's like what they do with Ghostbusters. Because someone, no. someone asked us earlier, are we going to go watch Ghostbusters? And I, no, I'm not going to watch Ghostbusters. I mean, I'll so, I mean I'm going to watch it, but I don't, I'm not on the reviews. So. Right. I probably am going to watch it, but since... Tommy doesn't want to watch. I don't think we're gonna review. But it. the idea is that like that's people have been saying mixed things about the new Ghostbusters because mm -hmm. most people don't understand what Ghostbusters is. Is four four or three legendary mm -hmm. comedians and a straight man who really didn't belong there all that much, but mm -hmm. but is also in there to add made this really subtle and slow building thing mm -hmm. and then they've been like oh ghostbusters is jokey haha -ha, and whimsical and fun. It's like no, it's not. No, it it's was, boring it, and plotting. I, I like the way. Uh, Brian Quinn of Impractical Jokers. Yeah. You. Shout out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell him, Steve, Dave. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the way he put it, where he's like, these dudes are just like the fucking garbage men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're exactly. the garbage. They're, they're the trash guys. They're ex, yeah. They're exterminators. They're bug exterminators. Right. Like they're, but just. They're not here to save the world of like, an ice, of an ice uh, god. They just so happen they, to kill a giant marshmallow mm, man. They're just guys that accidentally like became heroes. They're victims yeah. of circumstance. <laughs> uh -huh, but like to bring it back to like the Beetlejuice, I would say, yeah, like. More Beetlejuice wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because the proof of it is that at Universal, they gave Beetlejuice his own rock show to do during their Halloween nights. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Beetlejuice musical that's on Broadway. And right, all of uh, it... What's her name? Gave a handy to. 
Uh, yeah. Whoa, that, what? That politician lady, Bobert. Oh, yeah. Lauren Bobert. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Man, man, Beetlejuice was it a did hand? it. Yeah, it was Beetlejuice. Yeah, no, it was Beetlejuice. But it's just like, man, really, Beetlejuice the music. Was I mean, the that's one that what I said. You? I was like, really? <laughs> like that's the one. What? Like, what? what? What part of yeah it yeah is like that? what what number was it what was it the Deo it was <laughs> it was this right here can you deny any of this a banana oh <laughs> don't gift that but but yeah but the point I, I'm saying is that like yeah the big thing that like these ones did is that like yeah they made Beetlejuice more of a central character yeah in um so that's why the to say like. Is it a bad thing if it's there's more people just saying? I think it's a good thing because they've shown that like you can give more light to this character, and it would still be a good thing. I mean, even the animated show, he's the main dude in the cartoon. Mm -hmm. There are episodes without Lydia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just him in the ghost world. So the question is: Is he gonna say slurs in this one? Nice fucking model. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what if he just starts being? That's uh, or. And, and and because nobody said it yet, because because people love Michael Keaton, they think of Beetlejuice and Batman. But what if? And, and let's just say, let's just say it here because there's, there's just having to be a lot of women in this frame. Mm -hmm. What if Beetlejuice too is woke? Um, what if he starts being the most wokest character of all time? He says, "I can't say bitches anymore because it's against the culture." Well, look, I well, don't I don't believe this, but. We as men all know the rules of Beetlejuice. You, it's like Virgin. No, I say Virgin Mary. It's like Bloody Mary. You can't say his name. Right. So we're like we're teetering on it right now. Mm -hmm. Like I think oh. each one of us have at least said it twice. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Actually, well, I think when you've already said it three times it <laughs> over the course of all of this, yeah. <laughs> Well, but, is it anything like, like Candle Jack? There's, oh, there's, shit. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. Ah, I, messed, I messed up the bit. Fuck. <laughs> so what happens if you say Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Candle Jack, Beetlejuice? <laughs> they both, like, go out and... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you turn one, into two, three, wood. four women there. That means only... Was that a fourth woman? Who is that lady? No, it's a dude. Oh, that's a dude? That's a dude. There's one, two, three women. They each need to say it once, and... <laughs> And then they'll, oh, nope, nope, and then they'll be woke. See, look, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because they're white passing ladies, no one's saying it's woke, even though Jenna Ortega's Hispanic. But, uh, just saying, he can't say slurs anymore. He can't, he's gonna be hamstringed. He can't, unless, he, unless, unless they really go for it and they make him like off the wall, like edgy, but will edgy even work for this audience, or is it going to be for 40-year-olds like us that are going to be watching this? Like, are your children going to watch this? Well, is this a family romp? No. No. Cause no, like, but, how do you, but how how do you know? Like, how do you know? Because children are watching Beetlejuice when they probably shouldn't have. Like, I'm talking about five, six-year-olds watching the original, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so... What? Who is this? Who is this for? Is this going to be for the elders like us? Is it going to be for the elders with children to be like, hey, come watch this spooky thing? Or you know, I just wonder. I just want. And then what's the extent they could take the humor? Because like I said, Beetlejuice is a bit not raunchy. Well, I feel like it's for yes, but the, aggressive. It's for the elders. Mm -hmm. and the reason I say this is because one the. Uh, to your point, the the first Beetlejuice wasn't so much for family. Mm -mm, it was PG thirteen, if I'm not mistaken, or R. Like, yeah. So. Well, they got the one F word. Mm -hmm. So it, thirteen. It, I'm trying to find the rating on this. I can't find it yet. I don't think it's rated yet. Uh -huh. Not not two anyway. But yeah. also, Tim Burton has been slaving away at the Disney mines. <laughs> Correction: uh, the original film had a PG rating, oh. and Beetlejuice two will need to have a PG thirteen. Yeah, so, because the, the the Overton window of the ratings board, it yeah, really it, yeah, because um, yeah, you could see like tits in a PG, in PG movies. movies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Tim Burton's been slaving away at the Disney mines, writing family movies and mm -hmm. directing family movies right. for like the past what twenty years at this point, Roughly. right? Uh, he hasn't really worked on. An original, like a fully original, like this was me, right? Project mm -hmm. in a while, and that's really where he thrives because mm -hmm. I kind of hate like all of his adaptations. Oh yeah, they're not very good. <laughs> <laughs> None of them are very good at all. 
So that's, I guess, let's see, there's two crowds, the teens that are horny for Ortega and the Tim Burton fans. But like I'm saying, because he's been doing all this soft shit for years and years, where are the Tim Burton fans that are just like, oh, it's Nightmare Before Christmas, and nobody likes Willy Wonka, uh, nobody really cares for, um, what's the one, Scissor Hands, Edward Scissor Hands, as much anymore, that one fell off, uh, was him the barber one too? Sweeney Todd. Oh, Sweeney was that Todd. him too? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, so Sweeney, no one's thinking about Sweeney Todd, so it's like... Mm-hmm. He's got this Hail Mary of a Beetlejuice, right, of a property that people love and adore still. But, can't, I mean, I think it's. I think the first one was just such in a bottle because me watching it in 2017 or 18 going like, oh, I'm new to this whole property. This really doesn't do it for me because it's, it's edgy to be edgy for the sake of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not a little kid, so it's not super exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an adult. But then, so there's going to be now adults like yourselves and of childbearing and child having age where they were like, well, ha- they're going to bring their kids. The kids are going to be like, this is the edgiest thing I've seen because I've been growing up on Bluey and my parents took me to go see this movie and it's got spooky things in it and a worm with stripes on it and weird faces. Oh, sandworms. sandworms. You hate them, right? <laughs> I hate them too. <laughs> He's like, sandworms, I'll fuck him, right? And he gets the bucket from Dune. <laughs> Why? See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think for these kids, in order to be fucking edgy, he's got to drop a couple F-bombs. He's got to say some slurs. I'm not saying I, should, I want him to. I'm just saying that's what it's going to take. He's going to skibbity toilet all he's over this place. The election was rigged. Gonna... Yeah. Yeah. What if he's like a Trump supporter? Like, what Like, what are they going to do, right? And he's like, ah, oh, it's the one that <laughs> took all the paper the ballot. World great again. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's the over under that he does? That he says great again. What's the over under? T- tell us. What's the bet? Because he, you, you know, you know that Tim Burton can't resist a modern reference. I a topical I, reference. Damn it! This isn't fair because it, you're playing on my emotions. I. I generally do not like Tim Burton. Beetlejuice is the lone exception. That's the thing. I'm a Nightmare Before Christmas, and even then, he's not the one that made it. He's just presented no, he's, it. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's it's like, it's what, what, what was the one? I don't Quint- count Nightmare. What was Quentin Tarantino Presents Jet Li, like the one that one Jet Li movie? Oh, Hero? Hero, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, that wasn't even fucking Quentin Tarantino. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. But anyway. It, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to, to say, like, for sure, <laughs> but it's... W- He's for sure gonna say Sorry, Ray Rahim. <laughs> he's for sure going to say Riz. Oh, yeah. Mm. I've got the Riz. And I'm going to oh. cry. I'm going to fucking. Dude, you know how mad I'm going to be if I have to watch this movie and he says Riz? I'm going to be what? so mad. Wait, what's the over under on Helen and Bonner and Carter showing up? Ooh. I, mean, I would go. She, she would. Like, even after they divorced, she was still in the movies. She was still in the movies. Mm. I, I would, I also, would. what's the over under on Johnny Depp? Like, his name has been cleared, right? Mm. Uh, and they were kind of married. Uh, I don't know. It, it's harder Maybe. for me to name a Tim Burton movie that doesn't feature like, Johnny. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I, yeah. I would chalk maybe, like, cameo. Frankenweenie. And even then, I probably wouldn't. He's going to be the new Otho. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh man. What if we just get Ezra Miller in this movie? Oh, Jeez. fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Beetle Ever Christmas, Edward Scissorhands, Batman, Alice in Wonderland. Oh, that's right. Frank and Weenie. He's Big gonna... Oh, I liked Big Fish, to be fair. Big Fish is. I did enjoy Big good, Fish. Yeah. It was a little weird. But Depp is still in Hollywood jail, God Phyllis said. So um yeah. You guys just made me realize that he's probably gonna say all those things and, and it's gonna be like all those dreaded like two thousand ten remakes that were like trying to be hip and stuff, those DreamWorks remakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or like the Grinch says like uh fleek or whatever. Th- I th- I don't think uh, it's going to do that. That completely dates the movie. <laughs> right. I don't think they're going to do that because uh, Jenna Ortega got mad when they tried to do that on Wednesday. And she was like, no, we're not doing this stupid shit. We're doing it this way. And everyone called her a bitch because she was trying to fix the fucking script saying Wednesday wouldn't do this shit. So hopefully, hopefully um, Batman says, you know what? Beetlejuice wouldn't say Riz. He wouldn't be up on unless did he say hippity hoppity things in the 80s in that original movie? Not really. Okay. Mm-hmm. The closest was the thing that we quote every time we see each other. Which is? Well, when he first meets uh, Alec Baldwin <laughs> and uh, Gina Davis, who are the protagonists yes. uh, of the original movie. Um, he's like, oh, come on, bro. Like, we even shop at the same store. And, and he's then, wearing his exact right, outfit. Camera cut, and now Beetlejuice is dressed exactly the same as Alec Baldwin. Right. And he's like. Hermano. Hermano. <laughs> okay, 
that's the scene. Scene. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Beetlejuice is endearing. I love him forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the same time, uh, completely unrelated. See, you guys have picked your brother greeting. Uh, me and my brother chose Tommy Boys. Uh, brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got to hug. We say that all the time. That's our go-to, whatever. Now find you, your Aztec god name. How do you say goodbye to each other? Um, no special, uh, to my mind, no special uh, thing in my mind. There's something. I have to think. I have to think. Go ahead. Should we, should we, yeah, all, right. all right. So usually, you know, he visits, mm-hmm. leaves, or I visit, leaves. Mm-hmm. So when we go our separate ways, we do a handshake, bring in for a hug, and then Hell Hydra. <laughs> that's that's pretty intimate. That's, that's pretty intimate between all of you guys. Um, no, I, my bro, I just leave. Christina, I just walk out. No, no, no. Oh, you're getting a hell hydra. No, my, <laughs> me and my brother. The only thing we do is uh, we will go uh, bro for bro, if you will. So we'll be like goodbye, brother. Goodbye, bro, Sidon. Good guy, bro. Uh, good, good, goodbye, bro. Hit him. Oh, that's and we would just and we would just keep layering just, until we break. Yeah, yeah. Me and Paco do that whenever we call each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come up with bro nicknames. Yeah. yeah. He'll be like, what's up, bro, Chacha? And I'll be not much, man, bro, Lorian. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we got bro Meliad. We got, yeah. let's see, uh, we did bro What are you Sidon. doing, Rambro? Not a lot, bro, bro, cop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, folks, I don't know who you're telling on, but hey. We got out of that creepy, creepy beginning of this episode <laughs> and onto this maybe pretty great movie. Who knows? We'll never know. Actually, you know, we will know. It's coming out September, like 26 or some shit like that. Well, folks. It's showtime. It's show, <laughs> showtime. Bada big, bada boom. I got all the riz is what he's going to say. Juan, thank you, for, thank you for joining us, Juan. Be sure to for having me. Thank you for be, be sure to follow. I'm why did mm-hmm. I lose all of my energy in the last two minutes? I was like, you guys are doing all these handshakes, and I'm like, oh, this is I'm so fucking tired. Um, be sure to follow us on the TikTok and the Twitters, and be sure to be a patron on Patreon and get the free episodes. Um, what's the next episode? Let me find that real quick. That's very important for everybody to know um, because I've already got them all scheduled because I need I still have to clean my apartment. Um, yeah, and if people want to check out more of me, be sure to follow Alpha Primo. Subscribe on YouTube. Do that. As a matter of fact, do that right now. Mm-hmm. If you don't do that right now, you do not love me and you do not support me. <laughs> <laughs> and I will not stand for that. If you don't follow Alpha Primos right now, I, I, I I'm serious. I think it actually means they don't love us. Oh. Mm-hmm. Don't support us. And that means they're not Alphas. Thanks. Or primos for that matter. Mm-hmm. God dang, I'm trying to find where we post these shows, but I don't know the interface yet still. But I have a list of, uh, here we go, settings or create. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to show the people what we got. Anyway, uh, team apps that podcast. will cost you 20. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the idea is I don't even know which one's going up next. <laughs> I forget. Oh. oh, you meant on the Patreon. On the Patreon here. I mean, you YouTube. meant what I personally got. Oh no, no. Let's see. What's the what what's today's date? The twenty My phone my watch died. Great. Oh Chica, you can totally be an alpha and a primo. Exactly. Mm. You're no don't limit yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like anybody who follows the show, they're an alpha and a primo, but we're not related, so just don't ask for money. Right. Right. Also, YouTube is down, so I'm never going to be able to discover where our next video is coming from. Uh, oh, there to go. Hold on. So, unlisted, unlisted. Uh, shit. Fast and the Fury. That was me and Ian's show. And I believe... Oh, shit. There are... Never mind. Never mind. We're getting out of here. I don't know when the next episode is. I can't find it. But follow our Patreon and be able to find it there. Juan, thank you for joining us. Hey, oh, there's an ad. Me. Oh, there's an ad. Oh man. Well, they got. They didn't get the outro. Well, say bye to everybody. Bye bye. JJ, say bye to everybody. JJ, say bye to everybody. I said JJ, say bye to everybody. Everybody. Night, everybody. Yeah. All right, everybody. We say bye to everybody. Bye everybody. I don't need what? <laughs> I don't need money. I need cheeks. You I mean, can't have. You can't have. Don't we all? <laughs> right. You can't have. Mm-hmm. Night.